Good evening, race fans. Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway, night number two of the Infra Challenge 100s. Four more races on the slate as another huge roster of drivers are trying to be the 44 luckiest, fastest, best drivers here tonight in Daytona Beach. We're happy to have you with us for our second night of action. David Schildhouse here, along with my broadcast teammates, Parker Kligerman and Landon Castle. Boys, we had a whale of a night last night, four exciting races, not as much green flag racing as we would have liked, but we did see quite a few bold moves, I guess you could say, some surprises, but in the end, 11 drivers from each one of those races moved on. Now we get to do it all over again. Parker, we'll start with you. What did you see last night, and what do you expect to see tonight that you know could be a little bit different? Well, David, you said it. It wasn't as much green flag running as we had hoped. We also didn't see any of the uh, real-life pro drivers like Kyle Busch or Denny Hamlin transfer through because, you know, they looked like they had the speed, but they just were not able to maneuver their way through the fields as quick as they want without as much green flag running that we didn't have. So that was unfortunate, but we saw some great racing among some of the eNASCAR stars at the front of the field. Guys like Jimmy Mullis, Colin Keister put on incredible shows when we were under green. So we've told, I think, a lot of the racers here hopefully watched that last night and will be focusing on how they maybe make these races cleaner tonight because you just can't win it. You can't transfer, Landon, if you're not actually running at the end of these races. Yeah, running at the front, front Parker, is important, and, and it seemed like track position qualifying up front was important last night, but we did see some guys racing hard up front, hard for the lead. Colin Keister made a three wide move for the lead in a race that advances the top 11. One thing I, I noticed last night, Parker, was that as we got later into the races, that intensity running up front got turned up a little bit. I don't know why. Was it because uh, the first couple groups were too conservative up front? And then when they realized that the, the second half of the field is just going to wreck anyways, that I might as well go all out or or what it could have been but as we got into race three and race four we saw a lot more side by side racing in the top six the top eight um you talked about uh what was it low margin um uh, risk, low uh, high yeah. risk low margin move we saw yes. a few of those we could see some more tonight I, I agree, and I think that was the crazy thing was the racing up front. We saw guys like Colin Keister who maneuvered through the field so well when it really didn't matter. Once he was inside the top eight or so, you know, he felt like he was pretty safe. Jimmy Mollis, Blake Reynolds, I mean, they put on a hell of a show at the front of their field of their race, and they, I mean, they were safe. They were in the top three, so you know, I think a lot of these drivers thought this was a big stage. They wanted to win, even though it didn't mean much to win. It wasn't any different between finishing 11th or winning. You're both going to advance all the way through, but we saw them wanting to put on that show. And hopefully tonight, I just really can't harp it enough. I think a lot of these drivers will have watched what happened last night and think about, hey, how can we be a little cleaner? That's just something I hope is on the agenda because I want to see green flag racing because when we did, it was awesome racing. Yeah, absolutely. Great points. And uh, that that that's exactly what we all want to see uh, is green flag racing. So hopefully we will see more of that tonight. You see on your screen there things to watch for tonight uh, in our first race here. Race number five overall, Garrett Smithley, Ron Caps, two of the standout names that you will find in this field. We got some competitors from across the pond as well. So not just an American driver field. This is truly an international affair. And to your point that you were making was the field watching last night, the guys who were driving tonight, were they watching their fellow competitors last night to see how important qualifying was and then how few green flag laps they may actually get to make their way up through the field? These are really the important things. And uh, so those remain to be seen. But for for Garrett Smithley, Ron Caps, you know, a couple of guys come in with uh, different levels of experience. What do you think we're going to see out of them? Smithley may be a little more experienced, perhaps a little more accustomed to this. Ron Caps may be a little bit more of a wild card. And, you know, those are some of the real world racers that we have in tonight. Um, they didn't do so well last night. Didn't go very well. Um, I'd like to also. We haven't you know, had one advance, Parker. No, we haven't had one advance. So they're, they're really, <laughs> they would be the first if they do that. I got a lot of, I would say Garrett, in my opinion, probably has one of the best chances to do that. He's so, you know, such a frequent racer on the service, has so much experience in eye racing. But I also got to give a shout out to Christian Chalnier and Peter Bennett from the UK that are racing with us here. You know, it's pretty late over there uh, right now. So I know Peter Bennett was, you know, basically getting, doing like changing his sleep schedule a little bit. So they, he was getting up late at night just so he could be ready for this race. So uh, that's real dedication, Landon, to being here and trying to get in the Firecracker 400. 
Yeah, and obviously Christian drives for JTG in the NASCAR, uh, eNASCAR iRacing Coca-Cola Series. Uh, I also want to shout out Mitchell Hunt, who's uh, towards the top of the leaderboard right now in practice as they're closing in on the session, getting ready to qualify in grid. Um, he's a uh, former eNASCAR Coca-Cola driver. And, you know, heartbreak. He's coming off missing the Pro Series by one spot in 2019. Uh, you know, high I rating guy knows what he's doing very competitive this is an opportunity hopefully for him to put up a big performance on a big stage you know david last night we talked about uh big players big stages big wins uh th this race this event uh everything that we want to do with eraser is is big stages and big events so uh the whole idea of starting with 344 cars and having to narrow it down and all the wrecks and the cautions and you know yeah we don't like pacing and all that stuff but but there's a lot of uncertainty there you don't know if you're going to make it to the next stage or not um so for someone like mitchell hunt it's a good chance for him to prove himself and get a big win yeah, absolutely. Great points there. Uh, the big names rising to the occasion on the biggest stages. We talked about Colin Keister yesterday. We talked about Justin Batello, who won the Monza Madness race earlier this year, and a lot of other names that came to the forefront. But still looking for some of those dark horse names, too, who might surprise us with a great run. We saw a few yesterday for sure. And with four more opportunities tonight, well, we could see more, maybe even see one of them take a checkered flag as well. And perhaps, just perhaps, Parker, We'll see one of these races finish under green as well. Remember, uh, the format for tonight is uh, just like last night, 40 laps or 40 minutes, whichever comes first. Unfortunately, yesterday it was all the 40 minutes. So what do you think, Parker? Tonight, could we get one of these things in all 40 laps under green? I have to think so. One of the things we do have to point out, and I'm sure Landon can talk more to this because he's our sort of our weather geek here on the broadcast team. But uh, the... The weather is going to be different here for the races throughout because this is all done off the realistic weather at midday today in Daytona, which there was some interesting weather down there. So could be some different conditions, allow a little bit more grip on the racetrack for some of these races. So that could help us out a little bit, avoiding some of those wrecks. Yet, uh, wrecks. Yesterday was really slick as we're watching a little bit of qualifying happening here right now. They're doing their qualifying laps. Qualifying landing, super important, we learned, because it was so many caution laps. So I think a lot of drivers have put a huge amount of emphasis on trying to be fast on that single lap in qualifying. Yeah, as we're watching at 87 of Peter Bennett uh, making his lap, you can see it's uh, partly cloudy skies here in Daytona. It's about 85 degrees. And it's, you know, I, I don't want to have any foreshadowing. We're just going to have to hang on as we're riding with Roger Carruth on the Blue Emu onboard cam. Raja looking good in there. Uh, it, it's it's nice and hot right now, but you know what happens when it's hot in Daytona in the middle of the summer. Um, things build up. The clouds come. We could see some weather. I don't know how you handle. How do you handle weather in, in a sim, Parker? We're trying, but we're keeping the weather as realistic as we can. And the track is going to change. We've got four races tonight. The track usage is going to go up. We're going to see it getting blacker and blacker. Obviously, the usage is a little similar to how the race ends it ended last night but we're going to see it progress as these uh four four uh, challenge races go on the one good thing guys we don't have rain so we will not be rain delayed obviously um but we will you know if there were a rain shower there landon that might change the usage on the track you know wipe some of that rubber off the racetrack so we'll see what happens here as we go through the night Boys, I want to say we've already got our first uh, our, our first social media jabs thrown our way. Yesterday, oh. we pointed at Landon, but uh, tonight, uh, I think none of us have been spared. As I, I look at Twitter, and uh, I see uh, Mr. F4 Speed, Blake McCandless, checking in. He finished fifth in his uh, prelim race last night. We got a chance to talk to him, but uh, he, he put up a, a little screenshot of the three of us and says, uh, at Schildhaus uh, is an accountant, at uh, Pete Kligerman is a church attendee and at Landon Castle is a cash for gold salesman. Changed my mind. <laughs> cash for gold, Blake. Oh, man. <laughs> well, listen, you know, no better time right now to hang on to some gold in this uncertain market. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, never want to be in a stuck in a liquidity crunch. <laughs> a lot of uh, potential inflation. Just keep Fed dropping finance money. terms. Just keep driving. I'm, I'm just yeah. thinking. Let me get, let me get low it. interest oh, rate. Uh, <laughs> derivative. Anyways. Give me a Buy call. Buy low, sell high. 
That's right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So like, thank you. Uh, thank you, Blake. We appreciate it. And uh, an open invitation to everybody watching, whether you're on Twitch, on Facebook, uh, or on Twitter or any other social media outlet that you're finding us. First of all, thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the night with all of us. And we want to invite you to participate in tonight's event. Get involved. Jump in the chat on Facebook, on Twitch. Uh, let us know who you're cheering for. What do you want to see tonight? And as always, you can use social media as well with the hashtag Firecracker 400. We'll be keeping on that so you can keep in touch with all of us as well and uh, keep the conversation going so we want to make this nice and interactive for everybody uh we're trying to get some uh, some more interactivity going on uh working on some cool things for you guys perhaps we can work in a few tonight but uh that's what we want to do is interact with all of you and and make you feel uh, like you're the biggest part of this show like we are and we're just here watching and and uh, lucky enough to be sharing it with you so hey man, i don't want uh, to we'll, we'll, interrupt but i'm just looking here at qualifying right now i, I see it i see it who, who is in first right now now we haven't had a real racer go there through. Is, yeah. Look at that. Garrett Smithley. I mean that is Clean that's stream. awesome. I love Clean it. stream coming through, man. It's uh you know <laughs> we've been waiting to see. We've talked about it a few times about when's one of the real life drivers finally gonna step up and make something happen. Well, I think the first rock's finally been thrown here uh by Garrett Ooh. Smithley going uh going P one and qualifying. He's setting the pace, but later on we've got some big ones coming. I mean we've got Dale Jr., we've got William Byron. Um did I mention we have Dale Jr. coming later? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Jr. <laughs> we've we've got NASCAR Hall of Famer Dale Jr. We've got NAS uh, inductee NASCAR Hall of Famer Bobby Labonte. So uh really good crowd coming coming a little bit yeah. later. Tons of the eNASCAR Coco I Racing Series stars are going to be throughout the fields here tonight. So they've been hugely supportive of this event. I look forward to it. Yeah. That's good half of the drivers. All right. Well, let's take a look at the starting lineup for this first race. And as we mentioned, Garrett Smithley is going to be the one leading him to the green flag. Connor Horn to his outside in that second spot. Good job for Connor there. Representing FTF Racing Leagues, Jake Poulin. We're all off from the third position. John Gorlinski in fourth. Good to see John up there from the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series. Jordan Hurley will roll off from the inside of row number three alongside Casey Tucker from Slip Angle Motorsports. Samuel Roush will roll off seventh. Alonzo Morales from eighth. Christian Schallner, another Coke Series driver there in ninth. And Aaron McEckern will roll off from that 10th position, Parker. Yeah, you have Samuel Roush on the inside of row four. Alonzo Morales there on the outside of row four. Christian Schallner back on row five. He's the NASCAR driver, as we said, for JTG Dot Re Racing. Aaron McCarron, Kyle Little, and Barrett. I'm not even, I don't know how to attempt this one. Polymus, I'm going to say, in row, outside of row six there. Man, Parker, I appreciate you reading those again. I got Josh Coley right here inside <laughs> row seven. Mitchell Hunt <laughs> with Mitchell Hunt. R. Hanks, R. Hank Steinmiller, Cody Ober, Peter Bennett, Callum Farley outside of row nine. We got uh, Brett Baldeck there in 19th. Ryan Anderson round out the top 20. Ron Caps talked about him, one to keep an eye on back there in 21st. With Stephen Waldrop, 22nd. Daniel Adam, 23rd. Uh, good to see Daniel in the field there racing Revo. We know and love him. Philip Bush in 24th. Christopher Rothrock, 25th. Dave Sanders, 26th. Steve Azinski, I'm sorry, uh, Steve Azeni in 27th. Christian Hawley, 28th. John Tarrant, 29th. And Brett Murphy rounds out the top 30. Parker, if you get the last uh, 12 there, we'll see how you do. You got some names. All right. Tyler Packer there on the inside of row 16. Branson Kogan. Raja Karuth there. Aaron Mulroney Jr. Robert Duvendak. Chris J. Scales. I mean, I'm doing pretty well. Brandon Thornhill, Dustin Ping, Marshall C. Gable, Tyler Ellingson, Tyler Dittmer, and Dave Cuvier. Well, you got it. You got it. Man, See, there you go. That's, that's, I like uh, it. That's some pro stuff, guys. Look at that good-looking like Radius house car that Garrett Smithley is driving on the pole. I think old Radius yeah. Bob has got to be pretty proud of that. That's a beautiful, beautiful race car. I saw Garrett put that tweet out with that picture. I was, oh man, I, I said I don't, I don't want to choose favorites. I have to be impartial. But that is a good-looking race car. You know, Radius, our, our good friends at Radius, uh, they they put up the Radius bounty at the LCQC, an extra thousand dollars if you could win running their paint scheme. Obviously, we've got Garrett. Just he he's driving the house car here all week. So hopefully he gets through all the stages driving those radius schemes. But uh, once we get to the Firecracker 400, I think you could see that radius 1K come back uh, with a bounty. Big bonus if you a, win. A bounty, huh? We've had some bounties in NASCAR recently. So we have. 
We've had some bounties in uh, in iRacing recently. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out for me. It got, I got oh, caught. Oh, man. Uh, well, see, if you got caught, if somebody has to put a bounty on you, that tells you you're doing something right, right? That's true. That is true. Funny enough, it's these guys right here, Big Green Egg, that were uh, the culprits there. But I think we can get this party started right now. Absolutely. Pace car is off. Green flag in the air presented by Brig Big Green Egg. And it's going to be Garrett Smithley leading the field down across the stripe for the first time side by side. And look at that inside lane. Get a good run through. Jay pulling in that 21, pulling up to the back bumper of Smithley side by side behind Smithley all the way through. And now we wait, guys. Now we wait to see. Do we have patience or are we going to get that early wreck? Well, one of the things we saw last night is especially at the front, as we see... Garrett Smithley was on the bottom. He's holding the bottom. Now he moved to the top down the backstretch. They were really fighting for the bottom, especially as he got in the later races last night. It looks like it's a little cleaner in the back than we were seeing last night, so that's good to see. But you'll see them sort of side by side now, jockeying position. Eventually, we should see them sort of get single file because these tires start to really wear off, and then they get really loose. As you see one of the cars there off of turn four get loose, Landon. Oh, very loose off of turn four, but it, it, it's like if you can get through these first three or four laps, everybody can kind of find a line. And then it's about five laps on tires where tires get hot enough that you start getting really loose into the corner, really loose off. So we can see some more side by side racing kind of thinning out. Last night, some of the leaders took uh, took that bottom lane once it was uh, single file restart. So Garrett, you know, probably start favoring the bottom, make them go to the outside. One look thing at that should... trans service transfer oh, yeah, cam, Parker. That's, that's uh, <laughs> yeah, that's important. That's something to definitely keep an eye on, right in that 11th position, because uh, those are that's that's where you got to be. Top 11 is going to be those who transfer in, and right now it's a it's a hornet's nest right there. That's Aaron <laughs> McEachern, and Kyle Little, Mitchell Young, Josh Cully, Alonzo Morales. They're just uh, in a knot, but you know what? They're doing a nice job. That's where your stomach is uh, basically is basically just you know in a knot right there as you're running around 11s you're jockeying position right there you're in the transfer spot you're out of the transfer spot we should note on the left side of your screen on the ticker there the cars in with a little bit of a tint of green that is the top 11 they're the ones that will advance as well as if you look at the numbers the blue and the colors underneath their actual number there is their license level so blue is a license the black is the world championship drivers pro class uh, and then green and so on and so forth. Red is rookie. That Aaron McCarron in the 16, it's a, that's Pontiac kid. He's a, he's a castle streamer. Painted himself. Is he one Pontiac. of your guys? Looking good. Yeah, he's one of my guys. Well, I think he's everybody. He's, he's, he spends a lot of time in our, our stream in the discord. I know he's in a lot of Twitch. So now we got Mitchell Hunt here in the transfer spot. Mitchell Probably not the best qualifying effort that he was looking for. Guys, I'm really, really impressed with this group right here. I mean, they are running side by side. I mean, five, six, seven rows deep with these cars. You can see them physically bouncing around. You see the sparks flying off. Oh, Garrett Smithley gets super loose. Oh, the bottom, off turn four. Wow. There is hold on to it. Well, we got a yellow here. That's Br uh, Bronson Kogan in the I number 74 it. machine. You did. You had to say it. He gets Dang. loose in turns three and four. And uh, we saw this so many times yesterday, Parker. So many times a guy just gets loose by himself on the top side, brings it down across the track as he's trying to save it, overcorrects, and ends up getting absolutely tattooed by Christian Hawley in the Penzo machine. Sends that NASA car nearly to space. Uh and that's uh, that's tough for, for Bronson Kogan right there. As you look, you see him out of shape there, and uh, he's just trying to save it. But, you know, I guess the good news is is he was a little bit further back in the pack, so not too many cars there to hit him. And we saw Raja Karuth have a great avoidance there in that uh, Wendell Scott tribute car, but then he got nailed in the back of another car coming along, and he'll probably, if he has enough damage, probably have to take that reset. We should remind people there is one reset in these prelim races, which means you get one shot to repair that car entirely, and then after that, if you wreck again and it's done, your night is done, your Firecracker 400 is done. So um, that's unfortunate for the NASA car there, getting you know sent off in the space, but... It's uh, what something we've seen is that that outside lane for no reason landing just doesn't seem to hold the cars as well. You, you even though the bottom is so bumpy and the car is so unsettled, you, when you're up top, you have to pitch it into the corner and slide it so much. It's really a hard balancing act for a lot of these drivers. 
Yeah, and I think, Parker, that might change in the 400-mile race when we get more cars, uh, more laps on the racetrack with these cars, more green flag racing. It might bring in that outside groove a little bit uh, if it can get some more rubber. But for right now, it's just a little bit slicker up there. And, and, and I hate to say that I told you so, but what lap did that caution happen? Lap five. That's, yeah. To me, in all the practice that I did, all the practice races that I ran, lap five was the first lap that the cars really started to slide around more. And you can run wide open with your right side tires on the dash line through the corner. You see the dash lines above Garrett's car there on the outside groove. You can do that for about five laps. But after you get five laps on your tires, you got to start breathing it a little bit. You got to keep it off the wall. We see a few cars on pit road, a number of cars, about, what, uh, six, seven, eight cars on pit road, some of them taking uh, the opportunity to get damage fixed. It looks like uh, Raja Karuth is not going to take his quick repair. Uh, he's sitting in the stall letting the crew work on that thing to get that uh, that rear bumper banged out as best as possible. Still a significant amount of damage to the right rear, but I think we saw yesterday that you can sustain some damage to this car and still be relatively okay. So I think he's just going to test the waters perhaps bank on the fact that we might get more yellows uh and, and keep him keep that quick repair in the back pocket as long as he can not a bad strategy but again parkers we've seen when you go to the back it's so hard to get back up to the front it is and it's the reason we won't see a lot of pit strategy in this race so for garrett smithley Poulin, horn gorlinski basically your top 11 top 10 they absolutely will not pit they'll with a couple cautions here they can make it the whole way and you know even though the tires will start to fall off a lot it doesn't matter. Track position will be so important. So as we get late in this race, you know, just because Garrett's leading now or, you know, some of these drivers are up front, they're going to have to be able to hold on to that car and some really old tires as well and, uh, you know, be able to navigate restarts and racing side by side for those first couple laps. So I think, uh, you know, we won't see the pit strategy, but there is an element of, of tire saving in there and, and trying to have the best tires late in the race. Well, it looks like the uh, lights just went out on the pace car, so we're probably going to be uh, going back to green here, I imagine. It uh, looks like uh, everyone trying to get themselves sorted. Lapped cars coming up the inside. We've got two lapped cars. That's Dave Cuvier, and the other one is John Tarrant. And uh, they do allow three lapped cars to line up on the inside there. Single file restarts. Lapped cars to the inside, three of them allowed. So I, I like that rule. We saw some trouble yesterday, Landon, with... Uh, mm -hmm. Lapped cars starting up towards the front and, and creating some issues for the guys running towards the front. Hopefully we won't see that here, but if you're if you're lapped down, you, you got to go for it, right? Yeah, I mean, you got to try to unlap yourself. These guys, everybody's got a fair chance. Uh, it will go back to single file restart after, I think, maybe the third caution. Uh, you know, if, if there's three cars lined up, the guy that I don't want to be in this situation is that third place, Connor Horn. Uh, you know, Connor, he's, he's, he's a really good driver, really great at B-Fixed, runs a lot of NIS, so I could imagine that he's excited to try to get into the 400-mile race, running a distance race, a longer full distance race. But if I'm him, I don't, I don't want to be I, I don't want to be in that spot where a lap car could be boxing me in from a, a good run on the leaders. Well, remains to be seen how it plays out, and well, that's why we're watching. We get the uh, dual shots there on the right side of the screen, one on the transfer spot, and one, of course, on our illustrious flagman, Barney, as the pace car pulls off, and the big green egg, green flag goes back in the air. Smithley down and away, trying to pull that outside lane with him, pulling a little bit uh, slower to get up through the gears there, a little bit of a gap there, but gets a good push from behind from the number one of Connor Horns. They get back up to speed. Those lap cars holding that bottom pretty well, but... Just as soon as I say that, we are back under oh, no. yellows. They piled it up, piled it up at the start finish line. And that uh, we've seen this a couple times, that rubber band effect, guys. And yeah, uh, I'm not sure like exactly what accordion. happened here. Looked like there was some accordion on that accordion on that restart. You know, these single file restarts, guys, are, a lot of guys are not used to that. And it, it's really hard um, to, to properly gauge when to go. I mean, the the. Just because you see the green light come on and the leader go doesn't mean it's time for you to go. Sometimes it takes another three or four seconds. Well, that, uh, we've seen that. We've seen that, yeah. Parker, that, that rubber banding. But, you know, I think when we saw it yesterday, uh, race control addressed it and, and got it cleared up pretty quickly. They did. And I, you know, we, uh, you know, going to this event knew those would be tricky restarts. So we've probably put in some really draconian rules about popping out of lane, uh, you know, trying to get runs on the others. We'll probably get the replay up here in a second. So 
we got to look at it right now. And yeah, I mean, they're, these cars are just so separated. They're probably trying to get a run on each other. Then, of course, they're all yeah, going mean, to jerk up. That's, uh, I'm sure the racing Cruz. officials will look down upon that and, uh, you know, be seriously um, sending some warnings and maybe even parking some cars because that's completely against the rules. Yeah, that was just too big of a gap there leading up to the green. And, and I mean, you got guys that are full break at the start finish line to try to avoid uh, the accordion effect. Yeah, that's that is uh, that is, as we say, not the way to do it. So <laughs> that is not, that's a good not way the to way. Say it. Thank no. you, Parker. No, yeah, not the yeah. way, not the way. I hear uh, race control Josh Mendoza doing a great job explaining to the drivers exactly what's expected on these starts. Uh, so a uh, big shout out to Josh, who uh, did a fantastic job yesterday, of course, in race control, back at it again tonight and making sure these drivers understand exactly how they got to be approaching these restarts because that's such an easy way to really have things go sideways, no pun intended. But uh, we, these cars, we, we'll talk about the restarts, I'm sure, plenty tonight as we get them, the differentiation between these cars and the car, uh, current cup car for the gearbox and how hard it is to get the cars up to speed. But uh, all that stuff really doesn't matter to me if, if you're maintaining your gap and you just go when the guy in front of you goes. It seems like a simple concept. It, I mean, it does, right? And it should be. The, the, the thing is, if you were watching last night, you'll have heard this, but we'll reiterate for those who weren't. It's one of those situations where the car, you know, just being old fashioned and replicating what they had back then, you know, it has the, with the gearing and the torque situation. If you don't really nail the start in second gear, it can create a huge gap to the car in front of you. So a lot of people try to time it. They're trying to, you know, almost game the system a little bit, game the restart. And that's when you get those accordion effects that we don't like to see. And that's why we put in some rules that really should have stopped that. Um, and what we saw there and what caused this wreck was basically against the rules. So, yeah, that was uh, – it's not what we like to see, and it's why we tried to we tried our best at least to instruct them not to do that. But like any other race car drivers in the world, um, you know, once you get in the race car and you get the red mist going, uh, all that goes out the window. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that you talked about the horsepower in these cars because these things go 200 miles an hour on their own easily. Uh, that was the beauty of these cars back then. In fact, NASCAR had to for the first time really restrict the carburetors um, in the in the late 80s. And, and slow the cars down to keep them on the ground. Now, fortunately, we still get to enjoy the blowovers and the comfort of our own simulators, and nobody gets hurt uh, here. But, uh, you know, they can go pretty fast with low horsepower. So there's just not a lot of throttle response to that low RPM. They gotta get, they gotta get going. They gotta get rolling, uh, Parker. And and so it's it's just hard to anticipate these restarts on top of the fact that we're not used to single flight, single file restarts. David. I'm uh, I'm looking right now, and I believe we're gonna have a serious amount of lap cars on the inside right here. So um, this is gonna be interesting, considering yeah. what we just saw that last restart. And you I got competitive guys. I mean, you got Roger Carruth back there, three rows back. Uh, I mean, he just took his reset. That car was jumped pretty good. So I uh, hate seeing him lose a lap on pit road, but he, if I'm him, I'm I'm gonna race my butt off to to try to get this lap back. So this. This could cause some issues for these top 10 drivers. He absolutely will be racing hard. Now, I'm, I'm a little surprised. Perhaps I read it wrong. I thought only three cars were allowed on the inside lane. Did I get that wrong? I think it's three restarts. And then three it goes restarts. back to single file. Yeah. Ah, okay. So I misunderstood. My apologies. Hey, well, right. okay. we got, uh, five too. cars. All right. We got five cars lined up on the inside. Carruth being uh, one of the biggest names, I think, there. Um, but again, he's going to have to get out in front of these guys and then get in front of the leader and then hope for a yellow to get his lap back the old fashioned way. But that's a lot to ask, but perhaps the caution will finally fall his way. The first two times it certainly did not pace car pulls off big green, a green flag back in the air. And, uh, we'll keep it on these boys to see how tidy this start is again, a couple of gaps here, a couple of very big gaps further back in the pack. But seemingly everybody keeps it straight for the time being. It's a mad dash down to turn one. Look at Carew. Three wide down on the bottom. Trying to get by Gorlinski and Cuvier. And he's going to turn Cuvier. Cuvier came down now. Oh, back on the track. No. And they are wrecked once again. That almost seemed inevitable, Parker. And we, we saw it. We saw it. And I, yeah, that's. Uh, no, 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 no. Yikes. Yeah, you hate to see that. And there's. 
there's no way to put that's just being overly aggressive i get your lap down i get you know you want there is no lucky dogs but to just jump uh, that many race cars um you know not cool i'm uh, i'm certain race control will frown upon that in a in a very stern way because that is basically against everything we wrote in the rule book for this event um yeah. and it's just you, you don't want to see that so i uh I, I don't know. I mean, it's an aggressive move. I think, you know, the 45 could have given Roger a little bit more space, but man, that's that's really unfortunate to see that far up in the field. It's always going to take out a lot of cars. Yeah, that's tough. Well, but that's, that's, that's racing, man. I, I mean, know. I, I, just, I, I know you want to be, I mean, we're definitely hard on him, but uh, man, it's an opportunity to race in a, in a big event, but uh, man, I hate it for these drivers that got knocked out. That was it's tough so i can see here that dave cuvier has been uh disqualified from the event. uh race control decided to disqualify cuvier from that event uh or from this event rather and and so that's an interesting uh, layer parker you talked about the fact that race control was uh going to come down hard on things sometimes if they determined in their estimation that it was outside the rules and we see our first administrative strike i guess you could say posed against the driver and here's the other thing you know there was it was made pretty clear to us uh last night that a, a massive amount of wrecks were occurring outside the top 25 cars uh running on the racetrack and you know being that those cars were lapped down they were outside the top 25 and we had you know maybe a rule or a, the way the rule read was that if you caused multiple cautions you may be black flagged Whereas what we moved to after last night, because it became pretty apparent that a lot of people were, you know, maybe trying to take advantage of that multiple times, um, is that we moved to a, a situation where if you do cause a caution that is avoidable, we have full disclosure and at our discretion to black flag you and remove you from the event. And I believe that's what the officials decided to do. So we, uh, you know, you see Chris Challenger that's in the pits from that. He was solidly in the top 10. Looked like it would be an easy transfer for that talented e NASCAR driver. A uh, guy I've spent a lot of time racing with. He and I did the Daytona 24 hours uh, earlier this year together. That was a lot of fun. But, you know, he, he doesn't deserve to be in the pits there. And I think that's why the officials looked at that as saying, look, that's not how we want to see it. We're going to set an example. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. going to send a message to the other, other lap cars and, and uh, I mean, uh, avoidable wrecks in general. Um, I mean, if this is your second caution, for sure. Uh, and and we're calling it avoidable because it's it's you know where our race control is going to use their judgment and and we don't want to see these cautions. We know there's going to be more though. Uh, this is a tough race, Parker. I mean, this is a tough event. I've had to yeah. qualify into hard races. I don't know if I've had to qualify into one this hard before against this many drivers. That is, I mean, I sound I am very stern. I'm pretty hard on the drivers, but I uh, I do see you know that side of it too this is incredibly difficult to enter a race with 40 plus cars knowing that the top 11 advance and if you do advance you are going to get paid so i think that's you know the element of it that's the element of why we're seeing these high risk low percentage moves um and i i don't blame the drivers but you know as race control and as organizers we've got to do what we can to put on the best event the fairest event and sometimes that means you know making tough decisions in terms of what we deem to be unacceptable and that you know those types of moves and what we just saw there was by our officials deemed unacceptable well, there you go a lot of discussion uh in the server right now a lot of discussion between the drivers uh, a lot of discussion between the spectators as well. Everyone certainly has an opinion uh, on this, and, and that's to be expected. It's certainly a, a divisive thing. The first time we've seen an administrator park, you know, a driver uh, in, in this event. So that's a big deal, and uh, the first time we've seen it. So, of course, that's going to draw a little bit of a reaction. But, um, you know, lights are out of top of the pace cart means another restart's coming. Hopefully uh, it's the last one. Hopefully it's the last one. Smithley continues to lead. And uh, going back to social media, I don't know if you guys saw this or not, but Garrett put up a picture of himself. Uh, he's in a, a, a tie and a, a suit jacket with a T-shirt. Uh, the tie is a little sloppy. Um, it's actually very sloppy. But uh, he, he, he put on the jacket. He put on the tie to try and uh, uh, embody the spirit of what we're doing here. And uh, uh, he, he, he sure does look, you know, okay in it, I guess. It looks Gary knows how to get that lead stream going. 
<laughs> well, they got to be excited. Their man's out front. He's been leading every lap, looking really good. Um, you know, we're and we're looking at time here. Probably another what 15 minutes or so left in this race. I doubt we're going to get to 40 laps, but for for Garrett, he's doing everything he needs to do. 15 minutes, so we might have yeah, a chance. Yeah, a little bit of time. A little bit of time. Yep. Just got to stop wrecking, right? <laughs> That's right. We got lean stream in the chat right now from Gotham Daisy, Mark from NC, Dad Gamer Swiss is in the chat. Dad, good to see you. We're going green though. Yes. yes, DGS, we love to see a big green egg, green flag back in the air. Hello, everybody. Smithley back down underway. We were all single file, so I guess that's that third restart rule, all single file all the way through. Uh, interesting enough, uh, Raja Karuth lines up, what, the uh, seventh car in line here, uh, Parker, so we'll keep an eye on him as he's going to continue to be aggressive, but still a lap down. Yep, and we're seeing riding on board right now, Garrett Smith. We've got the trans service transfer spot cam up there, which is watching Josh Culley right now. He's currently in that transfer spot as Puyan gets real close to Garrett Smithley down into turn three. Just getting Whoa, a bump, a little, little, little help. Big run on the outside from the 33, it looks like there, of Brett Baldeck. You and just Raja gotta watch and, and is Raja in there as well? Yeah. Getting in the mix. I mean, if you're Raja, you know there's a caution coming, uh, but you also saw oh, a guy. There's gonna be one right behind them, I'm pretty sure. Oh, we I got think it's a blowover. Yeah, it's a blowover. We're going to have to add it. We'll wait for the uh, production team we'll to get the, the graphic up, but I think everyone knows what's coming. I think our cameraman is running with the camera right now. That was almost a double blowover. Almost. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I believe I know. it also was a car that has been very comfortable flying through the air in this race. Oh, no. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, Parker, you're going to hate to see this. That was our Hank Steinmiller in the 75 Valvoline machine. It was the one that actually took flight. The NASA machine, who took flight earlier, uh, kept, uh, oh. kept them all on the, on the tarmac. But yeah. uh, Valvoline taking flight today. That That's might not... be the most violent blowover that we've had. So in the we, we, uh, we got to add that to the Ventrac blowover count. That's going to be number four for the event. There was three last night. That is... Then track blowover count number four here for our, and uh, our Hein Steinmiller gets that honor as you see the blowover count right there at four. So if anyone in the chat has any uh, predictions as to how high that might get by the end of the Firecracker 400 event, by all means, please send it in. I'm curious to see what people think. What's, we'll what's the over under? Uh, what's are we at? Fine. Let's do a poll. Landon, can you do a poll on your end? How do you do a poll in chat? Somebody, so somebody you're going to do. I got my keyboard. You're going to do a backspace with uh, and type poll. Okay. And it should bring up a, a menu for you. Okay. Open to set or, up yeah, a menu. I, I think, uh, I think a, a, a mod might be able to do it for you as well. But, yeah, if, if you do that, you should get the menu, and then you should put in the uh, the poll question, put in some uh, some options, set okay, the timer, and, and, and they go. <laughs> Control King, let's set, set up poll. Where's Control King? Oh. I'm a pro streamer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Chris Hiddle, I'm sorry. Chris, oh, run, from the, run from the production <laughs> truck and help me out here. <laughs> oh, oh, no. You know oh, he's, he's uh, furiously typing to your phone right now at the moment. <laughs> be like, hey, no, 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 come on, man, stop. I got this, I got this. <laughs> oh, man. That's great. Oh man! And if we gotta get, speaking of Chris, we got to give Chris Handel some serious credit. I mean, what a yeah, wonderful yep. job he's done, building out this broadcast for us, leading the team, support class. Uh, that's his his uh, his company. They they do a wonderful job. He's uh, also family. Chris is my cousin, so nice. Love getting nice. Some, well. Some you bring up a good point. We uh, we got to give a big shout out to everyone that's been a part of this team here for the Firecracker 400. The team has grown exponentially over the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's hit its highest numbers just here today. It's been an incredible team. The entire production team has done a great job. Our own Joshua Mendoza has done an incredible job on the fishing yeah. side and organizing. David Schildhouse, thank you for joining us here on the on the broadcast side. Uh, I'm probably forgetting some people, but. I think this is, uh, it's been a great group, and we can't think of enough. And all the competitors that have decided to enter these races, all 344, uh, you know, it was an incredible response that we got for this race. 
and you know we we actually end up having to extend the the entries they filled up so quickly um so you know it's really cool to see the community that got behind this race and hopefully uh you know even the ones that don't make it through have some form of enjoyment through the practice uh through all the practices and all the things we did lean up to this you know these prelim nights so uh we hope everyone enjoys it yeah, all appreciate right you. garrett garrett's up to some uh some shenanigans here uh oh and yes thank you parker uh, absolutely big shout out to, to everyone involved uh our producer ryan bauer pushing all the buttons and make everything happen he's doing a whale of a job all of our camera guys as well uh everyone involved doing a, a phenomenal job so uh thank you uh parker and lana for for making this all happen but garrett smithley says if this if this race goes yellow for the rest of the race he will give the rest of the field one dollar each if it goes yellow the rest of the race rest of the race <laughs> So okay. he wants no more green flag racing, which I mean, I guess we have to give him a restart because that's technically a green flag <laughs> lap. But uh, yeah, so he, okay. he's, he's willing to risk what? Forty dollars, <laughs> 40 bucks. Well, he'll earn it back from that from a starting <laughs> spot in Firecracker 400 if he can make it back and make it that far. We're uh, we're getting ready to go green here soon, though. We're on the pacing way. We've taken the one to go. We have a poll up, David, in the chat. How many blowovers by the end of the Firecracker 400? And I'm the the categories are pretty aggressive. Because uh, what are we at right now, Parker? Four. Four. Okay, so we're so three to five. Only two votes. Two percent. Uh, six to eight. Nine to eleven. Twelve to fourteen. And fifteen plus. Um, we're kind of shooting the middle between nine and 11. We're at 31%, but there's a lot of weight on the top side, 12 to 14 and 15 plus 20% of the vote is at 15 plus. So, I mean, we, we've got three more races after this one. And then we have a 200 mile race and a 400 mile race. So not sure how much. Yeah. That's, how many, I, how many blow sure really 15 plus feel. I think my over under is at eight, eight and a half. I'm, I'm going to put you. it at well, big green egg, green flag back in there. We'll see if we can add to that total if it stays the same here at four. Remember, we had three last night alone. So if we average three a night going in, I think you can do the math on that. Uh, single file for the first three. Caruth, of course, pops out of line there. And there's that yellow. So Smithley might be owing some people some money. there. driving through the grass, still wrecking in one and two. Ron Capps involved along Capps with involved. others. Mm. Philip Bush, Samuel Roush, Josh Culley. Uh, looks like a couple other cars sliding through the grass as well. What in the world happened here? They, we, wow. I, What in the... They're three wide on the restart here. Almost four wide as there's a, a Marshall Gable on the apron all the way through going four wide. Uh, yeah, that was uh, interesting. Leaves you speechless a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I mean... I don't know what's going on here. This is, uh, you know, drivers being a little bit desperate at the back of the pack, seeing that counter, you know, this race moving to time, um, you know, trying to get runs on the restart and be aggressive by getting a ton of cars so they can possibly get themselves, you know, in position to advance. But as we said from the beginning, you can't advance if you're not running. And I think a lot of these cars are just not running by that mantra, pardon the pun. They're, uh, you know, they're taking every risk possible, David, and seeing if they – pays off and you know but you know damn the torpedoes if it doesn't and i just i don't know it's it's uh it's as i said it's really cool when racing green but sometimes when this happens you know and we see these consistent cautions and they build on each other it's just really frustrating yeah yeah i, I looking back at this restart there's just uh again some really really poor uh spacing and pacing going on around that tw uh you know, just outside the top ten, there's just some it's gaps. Tough, man. Guys that are, I mean, you can't I you can't leave a gap. You can't. You, you know, uh, I guess it works for you. You know, I mean, you, to think to leave a half a second gap um, to the car in front of you. But look, you can't pass on the inside before the start finish line. Okay, so if the guy in front of you is up against the wall on the right side, you leave a five. You leave a half a second gap. You just close your gap to them before you get to the start finish line. You have to slam on the brakes, you know, and, and the whole field behind you has to do this big slinky and, you know, brings out a caution. So, um, yeah, just gotta be a little patient. We've been doing double file restarts for so long 
and they don't the double file restarts don't slinky as bad as a single file you know it's 20 rows of cars at the most not 40 rows of cars or 40 cars in a row i guess well do you think we just forgot how to drive apparently single file restarts because <laughs> i can remember yep. when i first came into stock car racing we were still at single file restarts and yep. eventually it moved to, and i don't remember in real life ever you know running into this and i don't remember back in 1987 so I think what's happened is, and I don't remember us suddenly going when we've gone, if any, I don't know if we really have gone back to single file any time since in real life, but I can't imagine if I went back to single file, I'd have such trouble as double file. So I think, uh, you know, I, I keep putting it on, this is drivers trying to, you know, make runs and trying to make it take advantage of, you know, drivers that are trying to do it by the rules mm. and we end up with the wrecks we get. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I, I can tell you that uh, we're gonna fix this. Or we're gonna try to fix it. I don't know. Maybe we did. Maybe we did forget how to do single file restarts. But I'm gonna be honest with you. I love uh, love everybody that's in this in the Twitch chat right now. Uh, that's watching this broadcast. And I am in full caps right now on race control, uh, sending a message to this group. And you know, if I see one more of these. I, I think I'm I'm just gonna have to turn Josh loose with that band hammer and yeah. uh, and and if somebody rear ends a driver beyond beyond twentieth on a on a restart, if you run into the back of somebody, I think it's just gonna be an end of the line and then a DQ. So uh, we need to fix this. We do, we do. Landon, it's up to us. We have the power. We do have the power. <laughs> we got the band hammer. <laughs> um, look, here's the thing. The coolest thing about all this. Is, that you know isn't very readily apparent with all the costs we've had but we got to give a shout out to iRacing because obviously none of this would be possible without them and this awesome platform we have to race on and them going to work and getting these 1987 cars into the sim and replicating them so incredibly well and allowing us to you know to put on this firecracker 400 event and that's the thing they replicated them so well it gives you appreciation for how hard these cars were to drive back then i mean these you know these drivers in nascar back in that time your dale Earnhardt, your bill elliott's were just incredible race car drivers being able to hang on to these beasts and you know wheel them around for 500 miles or 400 miles at a time so uh you know you might be looking at this and not know a lot about iRacing and just know these are incredibly hard to drive because they're so realistic well, it's been uh, it's been a journey so far. Uh, that much is for sure. That's a nice way of putting it. Um, frustrating when we're struggling to to, to pace. That's uh, <laughs> let's not get frustrated. We got a long night ahead of us. We got yeah, three we races. Can't get. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Don't make yes, we're going back green. Term. Don't make it your drinking term. Oh, brother. Uh, big green egg, green flag back in the air. As uh, again, we get a getaway here and. Uh, again, another he just huge, huge gaps. But I guess if there's huge, huge gaps, they can't really wreck if they're not around anybody. We'll take uh, it. That's the, the that's the going uh, prevailing thought at this point. Seems to be everyone's got their got their ducks in a row. Speaking of being in a row, the top four cars are in a row. Finally, we've hit the backstretch at speed for the first time in quite some time uh, with a little bit of racing going on. Garrett Smithley continues to lead, holding off Connor Horn there, and these three have broken away. They got Raja Karuth there who's still lapped down. He's still trying to get in front of these leaders to get his lap back. He's tagging along this lead pack and then a bit of separation back to uh, the next group and then all the way back to our trans service transfer spot cam there, which I believe is uh, Christian Chown here maybe in the uh, position? Or is that Steve Azeni? Steven Azeni is actually in that position. Very close, Steven Azeni, Peter Bennett all there, Marshall Cable. Very close racing going on but uh garrett giving up the lead a little bit to connor horn still holding that bottom though it's the safest place to be i just watch out for roger Ooh, we got one out of oh and they're wrecking on the back stretch oh he, he saved it, one in the grass. he saved it nice. i don't know how he saved it that was no oh caution. my god there was a no lot caution. of a lot of cars coming from behind and they managed to avoid john tarrant there in the 29 so we stay green thank goodness uh that was getting sketchy though i don't know how Hey, how they all Roger it. Carruth right here challenging the race leader to unlap himself almost as a yellow. And it's going to work. I don't know if he got it. it I don't know he if he got, got it. there. It looked like he was ahead, but we are going back to iRacing's timing. Oh, and it looks uh, like he gave him the spot. Yep. But I mean, this does put him, lines. you know, the, the 
you do stay in your position here, so that this does put him behind the leader on this restart. So the caution is going to be just a giant uh, cluster that ends up seeing Christian Challoner go around in the middle of a pack around that 21st position. They were checking oh. up. There were cars going slower, faster, and, and Christian had nowhere to go and gets tagged from behind by a Caleb Farley. And just a stack up effect. And then Challoner, yeah, just gets turned. Uh, there was a very slow car. That was John Tarrant, the one who was sideways down the back straightaway, guys who was trying to get back up to speed and everyone just scrambled to get around him and Challenger just got turned. Yeah, and that's a that's a tough break for Christian. I mean, it, it, that just shows he got a little behind, some bad luck early on. He was in a good position, but uh, when uh, when he got in an accident there with the lap car and, and uh, you know, bad just turns to worse. Now uh, the snowball effect. What that does now is put Peter Bennett in that transfer position, Parker. He's in that 11th yeah. position. I know that's going to make you happy as he's part of our uh, Burton Kligerman eSports contingent there. Um, time's starting to click down here, as you see. Less than, uh, less than four and a half minutes to go in this race. Probably time for a restart, but maybe not too many laps after that. It's going to be tight. And you uh, you mentioned in our transfer spot right now, trans service transfer spot is Peter Bennett, one of our Burton Cleveland Esports drivers and uh, racing from the UK right now. So it's quite late over there. Um, but, you know, he's committed to this. He really wanted to be a part of this event. Um, and uh, actually, I saw on Twitter he was taking a bath to get his mind right for the event <laughs> earlier. So, I mean, hey, look, if he gets the transfer, then that's, uh, that's real commitment. It might be a note for some of the other drivers out there. Hey, look, you might need a pre-race bath to get, you know, centered for this. Yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting picture. I'm glad he didn't show any more. Uh, no. the, the Suds action that I saw did did not seem like it was enough Suds action to uh, to provide a Twitter friendly picture. But uh, <laughs> thankfully, he showed a little restraint and didn't show any leg. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, no, we didn't, we didn't want to see much more than that. <laughs> yeah, but we do did. have some some good underdog stories right now as we close in. What will be. I think we'll get one more restart here before we run out of time, Parker. But it, I'm looking at 9th, 10th, 11th place. I, I see a, a C license um, in 8th, in 9th, Marshall Gable as a D at 2,600. In 11th is Peter Bennett 3 with a 2,000 I rating. So some, some pretty good stories going into the next round. It, should these guys transfer when you're looking at Christian Schalliner, uh, world championship driver who's on the outside looking in you know some pretty high eye ratings there uh, on the outside looking in raja karuth obviously still a lap down yeah and you actually have the net the other uh you know e nascar driver drives william byron esports which is john gorlinski he's just in six right now i think he's been playing it smart i've been watching him a little bit had my eye on him he seems to be just taking it super easy riding in the transfer zone basically knowing that he doesn't need to take too many undue risk um, but right outside, you know, that transfer spot, you mentioned that Peter Bennett's in. Steven is any, and something interesting about him is that he actually, uh, you know, sort of runs a joke scheme a lot of times, which is Scrabble. The game That's Scrabble right. on his yes. card. And his nickname is Scrabble Bags because uh -huh. he thinks his name looks like just a, you know, hodgepodge of, of letters. So, you know, if, the, uh, if Scrabble Bags is able to, you know, Scrabble something up or get the right letters and vowels and all those things put together maybe he can find himself in that transfer spot well how about uh yeah, how about some that. how about we like uh donate a sub to somebody in the chat that can come up with the the most points uh scrabble points out of the word is any <laughs> so i guess it's Are hard to validate whether you, yeah i don't know how we it's can validate, validate that but maybe the first person <laughs> to do it you know the quickest google fingers uh somebody yeah. in the chat get him get him get him a get him a sub <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you're probably gonna need a, a double or a triple. You can really do something with that. But uh, hang on, a, good it's luck. Coming in. Oh man, we'll, get, we'll see what comes. See what comes of that. Uh, three wide racing says it's Izeni with a Z. Is there? Oh wow. Uh, am I getting this? Uh, yeah, Izeni with a Z. Fifteen points, seventeen points, sixteen. I don't. I points. mean, maybe I, I. Maybe they are playing honestly, English. Parker. I, <laughs> maybe I don't they're. Know. Playing. Maybe they're playing it honestly. I don't know. Because I'm getting any. a bunch of different answers. Is that a word? Is any? I'm not sure about that one. No, it's not. I just looked it up. It's not English. No. No. <laughs> hey, I, I also. <laughs> it's not English. 
we we've taken the one to go here so we're about to go green i do want to shout out to uh, mrs castle who is in the chat right now my lovely wife who allows me to spend a lot of time putting this stuff together and really thank you so much mrs castle i love you taking care of the kids while i play video games i mean simulator and <laughs> race cars um <laughs> we got 30 God, 20 yeah. seconds don't, don't left say in video this game she also yeah said, it's not video game, game. Travel i shouldn't Lance say that Haskell. i don't know what that's about but hey let's see let's get this restart it could be i guess <laughs> maybe a green white here we'll see yeah we'll see what it gives them well i'll tell you this when i played scrabble the rule was always it had to be an english word we played english scrabble so that's yes. i think that's the the, the I rule think that's we'll a key rule. that one Yes. Yeah. Big green egg, green flag back in the air. A little time to work here. We'll see what these guys can do. Keep an eye on that trans service spot, uh, transfer spot cam, as this is supposed to be the last lap, I do believe, of this race. So a one lap dash for Cash Parker. So we and will we see a checkered flag. Yeah, and I think if we will see one under green and well, don't curse Peter it. Bennett got it. Well, we'll see. But we got Peter Bennett there. <laughs> he got a big restart. Got away from Steven Azeni and Brett Baldeck and finds himself in that transfer spot with a little bit of the gap. Hopefully they don't get a big run on him. He can hold on to this coming to the checker. Garrett looking to break the draft on Connor Horn there down the back stretch under the O-line. Big block into turn three. What are we doing? We need to calm down, guys. Back in the transfer spot. Everybody's safe. Top 11, but Garrett wants that win in the oh, radius no. house car. Oh, look That's at the, the transfer spot. They're side by side. To the line! All direct to the inside, not going to be able to do it. Peter Bennett got Peter it Bennett by inches. Smith by inches. In what a race. Out. What a race what back a to the race. line between Brett Baldeck and Peter Bennett. Bennett is going to get it. Oh, my goodness. That was dramatic as we had the leaders nearly wrecking each other for a worthless win. That's good racing right there. See, we just <laughs> need one lap. That's it. Love it. What a crowd. Oh I mean... Steven Azeni worked, worked his way to 14th. I mean, close but no cigar for uh, for Brett Murphy, Brett Baldick. I mean, sh congratulations, Peter Bennett. Unbelievable yeah. run side by side, three wide coming to the line for the transfer spot. That was a, a great, uh, a great drive and a great finish. And uh, I think now we can take a look at the uh, the final results here for uh, our first race of the evening. As Garrett Smithley is going to burn it down on the front straightaway, rightfully so. So is Garrett Smithley taking home the win? Connor Horn in second, Jake Poulin in third, Jordan Harley in fourth, John Gorlinski fifth, Mitchell Hunt in sixth, Barrett Polamis in seventh, Aaron McEcker in eighth. Alonzo Morales ninth, Marshall Gable in tenth, and Peter Bennett gets that eleventh and final transfer position. Baldeck, man, heartbreaking. Oh, I mean, what <laughs> an Murphy, underdog story. Steven Zenny, Dustin Ping, Branson Kogan, Philip Bush, Christian Schalner. I mean, oh, he had the speed. He got taken out in that wreck with the lap cars. That was just unfortunate. And again, as he was coming back through, uh, Christian Hawley, Kyle Little, Dave Sanders, Josh Culley. You know, lots, lots of drivers have come out here and they, uh, they gave us their time and hopefully they had fun with this and uh, you know, learned a thing or two. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously. We see the rest of the guys uh, as they scroll through there. But uh, Landon, we, we got we got the winner in chat here. Let's uh, let's talk to him. Garrett Smithley, Landon Castle here in the booth. Um, what a win in the Radius house car. You raced extremely aggressive on that last lap. I mean, I, did you have a little confidence in your second place competitor that, that he wouldn't wreck you? Listen, I, you know, I told myself, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be happy to finish top 11. And then, you know, what happens is you put your helmet on and you lose your brain. That's what race car drivers do. So that's what happened. And I said, you know what? I led this whole thing. I'm going to be heartbroken if I don't get it. But uh, it was good. We came three wide to the finish, which, I mean, I would expect nothing less. Um, I think it was the best finish. Uh, I guess I'm a little biased, but I feel like this is the best finish to uh, one of the prelims that I've seen. Watched all of them yesterday, streamed the whole thing. Uh, man, um, weight off my shoulders. Now let's go to work for qualifying. Yeah, Garrett. I mean, I, I got to tell you, uh, that, uh, selfishly, I uh, when I saw you going up there, I thought, does he not even want to run the next round? <laughs> Uh, does he not want to go through the work involved? I mean, now you got to build a setup. You got to spend all this uh, this time on your car. So, so I thought, oh, does he not even want to do that? 
I, you know, I thought about it, and I, you know, I saw that car coming on the outside, and then I saw the car on the inside, and I was like, you know what, this probably wasn't the smartest thing. But here we are. We're gonna lick the stamp. We're gonna send it. That's what happened. Yeah. Um, I guarantee that I won because of my suit. I I was incredibly inspired by you guys in the booth. I got my suit. I got my tie. I wore the whole thing for the for the whole race, and I, I believe that's why I won. <laughs> Solid strategy. No, the suit definitely powered you to the win. I I will go ahead and say that, Garrett. Uh, well done. Nice job. Beautiful looking race car. You got the suit on. The tie needs a little work. That's a little sloppy, my friend. Well, you know, um, I tied it myself. I do have a couple zip ups, <laughs> but uh, they didn't look as good as this one. Um, but uh, I, you know, you, you, you do you do what you got to do. But uh, shout out to Radius. Um, this is my second time in the Radius house car. The first time didn't go as well. This time I got onto Victory Lane. Even though it doesn't mean anything, we are at least in the qualification for the big show. So um, excited about that. Um, shout out to you guys for putting this deal on. I mean, Landon. Um, I think I think you and Parker, you guys are becoming the the humpy wheelers of uh, of Irish <laughs> promotion. It's uh, awesome to see um, Josh, of course, David up in the booth. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Really happy to be part of it. Thanks, Garrett, Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us here. Thanks for being here, man. That was awesome. Thanks, guys. Awesome, awesome stuff. As your winner of uh, the fifth prelim, the first tonight, Garrett Smithley. And from him, we're going to bring in the man who just got in on the other end of it in the transfer spot all the way from across the pond, my Burton Kligerman Esports teammate, Peter Bennett. You transferred in. Congratulations, man. Way to go. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, 2 a.m. here now. Yeah. Well, I think uh, I think the bath helped you out. What do you think? Um, chat didn't help me out. I wasn't, I wasn't watching. I was completely focused on the race. Um, no, I'll no, no, you your did. bath, your bath. Oh, the bath. I was going to say the bath helped me out. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so talk us uh, through that last lap. How nervous were you coming to that restart? You got a great restart, but then down into three and four that uh, I think it was Baldeck started to get a run on you and coming to the line, you guys were side by side. Yeah, I started to drift up uh, coming over towards the finish line. Um, I was incredibly nervous because um, I've... I've avoided maybe three three wrecks already. Uh, I, I picked up a little bit of damage, um, and I just wanted to to block uh, Baldeck. And uh, yeah, it was it was a close one, but it was it was incredibly stressful, especially when that last when that last caution came out. Um, we literally just made it into the the top eleven, and I genuinely genuinely nearly passed out after. Uh, after my celebration on stream, just, <laughs> just 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 from the celebration, so and then obviously we had one to green and it was just bring it home. We got a good start. Uh, uh, Baldex, it seemed it seemed like he dropped behind a little bit, but uh, he was just prepping himself, getting the run on me. Um, and I had my live spotter tell me to block, so I, I didn't I didn't block too hard. I, I had half car uh, half car on him, and uh, yeah, we we stuck it, we stuck it, we got it, boys. Awesome. Whew. Yeah. Great job, man. Really great job. I uh, I got some good news for you, too. You know, when we go to qualifying rounds here now, it will be a random draw, but you, you could get an early one, which would mean you don't have to stay up so late. I don't mind. I uh, I had a couple of hours sleep, and uh, I didn't even realize it was 2 a.m. My heart rate is 140 at the moment. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's as good as morning for me. <laughs> awesome. Well, great job, bud. Thanks for coming in here. We'll see you in qualifying. Thank you, guys, for setting it up. Appreciate it. Way to go, Pete. See you later, boys. That was great. What a finish, Parker. Oh, my gosh. I love it. <laughs> we needed something good. Like, we needed one of those. We needed That's it. That's right. We knew it was possible. Yeah. Maybe I we need that, to just I, come I, down on him. This is one of our underdog stories, I think. Absolutely. We're going to be keeping an eye on him. Obviously, he's he's got to switch gears now. I mean, he's got a setup to build. He's got to work on single car runs. Uh, you don't know what the weather is going to be. He doesn't know what his draw is going to be for qualifying. Um, qualifying in the sim next week is going to start around um, 10 or 11 a.m. So those first, you know, 10, 15 cars are going to have an advantage in first round qualifying. Uh, there will be a little bit of rubber building up over the course of the qualifying session. Uh, so the later cars will, will benefit from that. But once you get to noon, uh, one o'clock, we have 88 cars to qualify one at a time. It's going to get hot and slick. But uh, we got another race going on. Let's get ready for this thing. Uh, 
Parker, I, I've uh, I, I th- we got another stacked field. We keep saying they're stacked fields, but it's one right after the next. Are stacked. I mean, these uh, these races are just full of talent, full of some of the best in i racing, some of the real world racers out there. So what we got here, David, we got Ryan Truex, who's in the hot tub time machine, right? Is the uh, he's always got Marquis <laughs> spots on there. You got to give a shout out to that. Uh, our Hall of, Fa- Hall of Famer Bobby Labonte racing in this one in race number six. So we also watch him. He's probably got the most experience in these uh, this kind of car. Wouldn't you think, Landon? Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he goes he goes far back. He's a sim racing OG. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you got you know the four time eNASCAR Series champion Ray Alfala. He's the uh, the venerable Jimmy Johnson of i racing in a lot of ways. And then Malik Ray and Brandon Cattell from the eNASCAR series as well. So this one's stacked of eNASCAR stars. That's going to make it even tougher for any of these other guys that don't have that that world championship license to try and get through with having three of them in the field. Parker, I was thinking, I was thinking about the sim car. You were talking about the real car. Bobby real was. Thing. I know, I know. I was even thinking about what? that. What? Bobby was. Uh, he might have been in the Firecracker 419 years. I know Terry was. Uh, I, Bo- I think Bobby, Bobby was maybe a little bit later. I, I have to look that up. Uh, chat, maybe you know, help me out with that one. But we've also got. Uh, I mean, we've got some big ones in here. Obviously, Eddie Kerner won the LCQC um, in this race. Uh, so obviously, and also shout out to Dylan Gooden, who's in this race driving the Castle Motors house car. Um, my my family business back in Iowa. Uh, so uh, Dylan's a good good friend of the good friend of the stream. Love to see it. It's all about those connections. Yeah, some heavy hitters here. Let's take a look at the full field as the way they'll start here. Forty two cars strong. They'll be led to the green flag by the man you mentioned earlier, Malik Ray, driving for uh, Joe Gibbs. And to his outside is going to be the man from Clint Boyer Racing, also in the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series, Brandon Cattell. So two very fast fellows up on the front row. Will Cooley will come from that third position. Eddie Kerner, the, as you mentioned, the winner of the LCQC there in fourth. Kyle Trudell in fifth. Brennan uh, Merzda in sixth. Jared Ickes in seventh. Uh, Travis Brown, Moonhead. Keep an eye on Travis. He was talking on social media about big, meaty moves here tonight. He'll be coming from the eighth position. Dylan Gooden in the ninth spot. And Justin McDuff will round out the top ten. Move on to John Kinder there in, row, in the inside of row six. Johnny Thomas in the outside of row six. Ted Larson, Billy Rowley there. Gavin J. Jones, Aaron Roth, Will Weber. Keith Jeffrey rounding out row nine. And as we head back here, Bobby Labonte, Hall of Famer himself, Landon. Just remember, he did race in real life. That's why he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, Thomas Moose, Stephen Hill, Kyle Pokerfree, Sean A. Williams, and Nick Olson rounding out there in the row 12. Thank you, Parker. We've got Todd Smith, Aaron Prill, Matthew Groh, Michael Holmger in row 14. Gilles Chatelain in row 15 with <laughs> Ryan Truex. And I'm going to show some respect to Ryan Truex and, and say his name properly. Chase Angle, David Hensley in row 16. Yes, indeed. Chuck, uh, Chuck Johnson there coming from the 33rd position. Travis Furby in 34th. Fred Masters, 35th. Caleb Fosnaw in 36th. Michael Massey, 37th. Four-time Ray Alfalo way back there in 38th. Boy, he's got a lot of ground to make up. That is surprising. We saw Overland start way back there in the pack last night. Now his Slip Angle Motorsports teammate back there as well. Joe Lusty, 39th. Jason Skeen in 40th. Jason Eisenhower, 41st. And another one from the Burton Kligerman Esports contingent. Donnie Strauss will start 42nd and last here tonight in this second Infra Challenge 100. Another 11 drivers fighting to get in to next week's qualification process. With 42 on the starting grid, Parker, and only 11 making it, you know what's about to happen here. But uh, I would say if you look top to bottom talent-wise and just based it off of I rating, there are some big names in this field. There is, but, I mean, Ray Alfala, I don't know what happened in qualifying there. I saw some people in the chat were saying F in the chat for Ray Alfala because he's so far back. I mean, he has well, his work cut out for him, but we saw Colin. Parker, I, I've got a report here on Ray Alfala. Oh, right. Um 
So Ray is driving on a totally different rig tonight than normal. So I don't I don't know if he if it if he had to jump in late, didn't get enough practice. But we're going to be watching him close because he might have to be getting used to his car in real time. Wow, lots, lots to keep an eye on there. Lot to keep an eye on there uh, for Ray Alfalo. One to keep an eye on for sure. But pace cars off. Big green egg, green flag in the air. Malik Ray down and away. Cattell in second. Didn't quite get the same jump, but he's going to get a good bump from behind from Eddie Kerners. They're going to go single file. Kerner will slot in front of Will Cooley. These guys nice and organized up front. Single file for the first five cars. Two wide going into one between Mirza and Travis Brown, along with Jared Ickes. This is more like we saw last night. They get single file right off the bat. A lot of drivers fighting for the bottom. They just want to get down that bottom lane and ride, especially in the top five, top seven cars. We see, oh, wow, they're, they're a little bit more packed up as they get further back, That's jockeying for position. Travis, and for three. Brown, Travis Brown sideways down the backstretch had to go underneath the yellow line, dropped about five or six spots, moved Dylan Gooden up the grid a couple spots as well. Was that a well. moonhead meaty move? That was a meaty um, move. Wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> the wrong direction. That was a uh, that was a meat-free vegan move right there from Travis Brown. If I would have to say so myself. That was good. Well done. I try. I try. I try. You can ask James Pike. Sometimes I come up with a good one every now and again. But uh, <laughs> you know what? While these guys seem to be sorted in single file for right now, if we can get a camera on the 86 of Stephen Hill. Uh, video game fans rejoice when you see a scheme like this on this car, bringing back some really fond memories. Uh, Stephen Hill is with that paint scheme uh, going all the way back to, uh, well, oh, no, I just cursed him. He's sideways in the corner. He saved it. There's the commentator's curse. Great job by Stephen Hill in that 86 car, but uh, he's going to lose some positions there. But that uh, that classic paint scheme takes you way back in the, the Hall of Fame video days uh, as caution flag is going to fly here, boys. And uh, it's not going to be for him. It's going to be for Fred Masters and the 127 of Chuck Johnson as well. But let's start in front of them with Chase Angle, I believe. We're off to a good start. It was a little hairy. It was a little hairy in places, but they were keeping it together, keeping it straight. Um, but, yeah, we, uh, we'll have to see on the replay what happened here. I also got to point out real quick, Ray Alfala up to 29th, nine positions in three laps. He's flying through the field. Whoa. Oh, oh, man. oh so close. Chuck, Chuck Johnson. Johnson. It's so man. hard to, you know, that he wanted to just grab wheel to the right. But, Parker, how do you turn hard to the right when there's a wall there? You just want to ease man. it a little bit to the right. No, that's, oh, that's just being in the wrong place, wrong time, nothing you can do there. I mean, you, you say, you, you think, when you watch it back, oh, I had all the time in the world to respond. But when you're in the heat of the moment, that's, that's a split second decision that's got to be the right one and everything's got to go your way and it just didn't. You know what happens to me a lot of times in the simulator, Parker, is uh, when I get in a wreck uh, and I go back and watch the replay, I realize that I had more room than I thought I did. And I don't yeah. know if that's a monitor setting or if it's just me not being used to the sim as much, you know, looking for the feel of a real car. Uh, but a lot, I, I've had some accidents where I, I go back and I'm just like, man, I had more room. I could have I could have um, been closer to the wall or closer to the bottom and given someone more space. Never been in an accident in racing. That was my fault. So, yeah, yeah uh, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, right. Yeah. So I, I, I yep. get it. You know, you look back and you're like, hey, you know, I maybe that guy could have done something different, but it absolutely wasn't my fault in any way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh, that's, that's, that's part of racing is, you know, it really never being your fault. If you're not truly Always a driver, I guess. No, that's right. Not at all. Not at all. Never our fault. Uh I mean, all right, so I don't have the real world racing experience that you guys have. Uh, I only have it from this side on the sim, but uh, yeah, you're not wrong. It's never my fault. It's always somebody <laughs> else's fault. Well, David, yeah. first of all, first of all, David, do not do do not undercut yourself or anybody that doesn't have real world racing experience because this racing, it works the same. Fun, the fundamentals are the same. That's what's that's what's amazing about sim racing is that it's you know, it's not like playing Madden where the motion to throw a football is this in the game. You know, this is this is fundamentally the same thing. You're just you're just lacking the forces on your body. And so the characters, the personalities, the not your fault, all that stuff, it's identical between iRacing and the real world. 
All right, fair enough. So basically what you're saying, Landon, is that I have the same qualifications to judge this yes. as a, a, a licensed NASCAR driver then. You absolutely do. Okay. And you, right. you and every person on Twitter with a Twitter account. Yeah. Yes. All, if <laughs> oh, you want to judge Let's... a NASCAR driver, all you have to do is go on Twitter, yep. sign up for a new account, get a password, have a unique email address. Let's let's We're not at let's not get too far ahead of ourselves with Twitter. It's it's uh that's tough out there. Uh, we we don't want to give that much power, I think, to the Twitter universe. To be uh, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, hey, David. They, they, sir, if you look at the scoring pylon right now, there is one red box on the scoring pylon in the transfer spot. That is Aaron Roth with a rookie license running 11th right now. I think we found our driver to root for think so oh I, i'm sure we just cursed the hell out of him now that we're talking about him let's hope he can hold on to it uh you, Yo, you saw what rookie. i did you saw what i did to poor stephen hill with his daytona usa i don't know if we actually ever got that up on on the screen i really love that paint scheme as a, as a guy who played a lot of daytona usa um seeing seeing that uh, that old hornet uh high class paint scheme man just brings a smile to my face as a, an an old gamer I, I think i just i'm old but in any event um, yeah, a great, uh, a great job for Aaron Roth right now as the rookie, uh, license holder in that 11th position. And, uh, you know, long way to go still in this thing. A lot of things can unfold, but you know what? Strange things happen in racing. You guys know this. Well, this is this, this is what we've been looking for. All right. So people might, I've, I've actually seen some of the, uh, you know, chat amongst the drivers. They keep saying, Hey, why don't you, you know, basically not allow a certain, level of i rating in these races and that sort of thing but you know we talked about it last night sim racing allows us to do something that you can't do in real motorsports and that is allow anyone the chance and an equal footing to start at to have a chance at a huge prize and that's right. what we have here just like the us open in golf or tennis you can be just a complete amateur show up and race against some of the best as we get the green flag Big green egg, green flag back in the air. Barney doing his thing, waving that flag as we ride on board as well in that transfer spot cam with the rookie driver, Aaron Roth. So you get a couple of different perspectives here. Again, single file throughout the leaders. They just want to go, man. They just want to ride for a little bit. They understand they've been in these positions before that you got to get laps in. You got to just ride, but it's everyone behind them that's a little more anxious right now. Still single file, pretty patient. Yeah, I like to see this. I like to see the single file. Let's get it, you know, some green flag laps on the belts. They have the tires to wear out a little bit. You start to see where they're going, start to see where, you know, that your car's handling is going, what lanes are working, how the track is taking rubber, all those things. That's what we want to see. And this was actually a very clean start. We watched the transfer as transfer cam. Aaron Roth falling back. No, come on, the rookie. You got to keep up, man. Just got to keep it together. Don't get too high off of turn four. Now that we got about six laps on our tires. The temperatures are going to start coming up. I, I don't want to see my right sides too much higher than those white dashed marks through the through the banking there. As you can see, Malik Ray with a big arc into the corner in front of Brandon Cattell. Uh, everyone, this is this is I, I almost hate to say it. This is the most patient we've seen anybody, any grouping yet in these prelim races. Uh, I'm not surprised uh, to see it. I, I will say uh, I had high hopes for this group. And they seem to be working really, really well. And, and even behind them, even though it's a little bit of a mad dash around that 15th, 16th position, Sean Williams, Billy Rowley, Gavin Jones, all in a wad right there as Rowley's hard into the wall. He's going to take a few with them. Spoke too soon. There's a wreck on the front straightaway. Going through the grass, coming back up on track is Thomas Moose and making Moose Ooh. tracks. And he gets absolutely annihilated by Caleb Fosna. Oh, my yes. God. Caleb flipping through the grass on the front straightaway. Yikes. That was uh, right in front of our commentary booth here on the front stretch, and that was insane. One car was coming up through the grass on the start finish line. Another car came through and absolutely demolished them. That's uh, that's unfortunate, but that was a really happened where we've seen a lot of the issues, and that is off turn four landing. These cars, just as you've mentioned, it gets a couple laps of the tires. We get a replay here. See, I think that's Rally that was up in the wall, just yeah, lost and it, and that's that's what these cars do. There. Yeah, they get that huge slide. You just, the only thing you can do is back off. It's the only way to stop it. Yeah, it's really tough. You know, Billy is uh, um, really knows what he's doing on the IndyCar side. Indianapolis guy, organizer of the Fake 500. Good friend of, uh, good friend of E-Racer. Uh, tough transition into these old 87 Cup cars. Kind of like AJ Foyt back in the day, you know. It, although, uh, does have some pretty good success. But in 87, Foyt did struggle 
in these cup cars. So maybe for an indie expert, um, there's some some comparison there. So, there's something about the 87 cars. They don't they don't handful, agree the car guys. It's hard to go. I I mean actually I was just listening to my words as they come out. I was about to say it's hard to go 200 miles an hour. They were going plenty fast in the Indy cars. <laughs> I don't think it's the speed that's the problem, Parker. Uh, these cars just have no downforce <laughs> and, and not much grip. Oh man, well, I'm many, how many races do we have left? We, we're uh, we're losing. Where, up here. Where's that carpenter? Oh gosh, we gotta keep. <laughs> we're not even carpenter? at the halfway point, boys. We gotta keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, you know, it's really hard. Yeah, you know, it's hard. 50 miles an hour uh, in those Indy cars. For Ron Caps. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, full disclosure, there's there's a key there's a key ingredient that uh, that I'm missing uh, that uh, that I wasn't smart enough to think about that, uh, you know, I think for next week, next week's broadcast today, I'm just going to have to get on that plan. It's a special dietary plan that uh, that these two are on that I'm I'm not, but I'm uh, I, I, I'm going to oh, I'm going to change that, I reckon. I'm going to change that. Oh. Yeah, we're oh, having yeah. Uh, well, we're we're happy here. You know, in the chat, I've <laughs> um, the uh, the we're the chat like is. <clears throat> where, where is, is uh? Kind of it, sounds like, <clears throat> it sounds like, but did Bobby Labonte get get wrapped up in that as well? I thought. Uh, uh, let's see. Labonte is currently scored in the. Oh no! Uh, he's in fortieth. Yeah. yeah, he. Yeah. I think he had to take a reset there. Uh, let's take a look at it. I'm, I'm going to watch this and it looks like yeah, he got caught up in a little bit, but he didn't really sustain that much damage to his Penrose machine, a little bit of right mm -hmm. front damage, but that was about it. So I think he probably just came down realized he lost all the track position pitted, but, um, it looks like he didn't take that fast repair, which was a good idea. Man, that's tough on when to take it and when not. I mean, I, I found that I struggled to get through the field in the practice races coming from 30th on back if i didn't have a clean race car um as you see bobby labani he was wrapped up in that in that 44 so uh it, you know it not a ton of damage there on bobby's car it, it is going to slow him down a little bit though and and so this is definitely an attrition game for him and the problem is you, you think that you want to save your reset but when are you going to take it? Are you going to take it with five minutes to go in the race when you don't want to give up track position? Um, you know, I, it's risky, but my bet is to take the reset when you need it so you have a clean car and just, just keep chugging along. Keep it in one piece. If you get wrecked again, then so be it. Uh, I mean, well, that's just, it's a 40 lap race. 40 on minutes. the opposite side of the spectrum there, uh, we just got to give a shout out quickly to Ryan Truex and his hot tub time machine. He's actually up to 19th after that latest wreck. So that's he's right. moved up, I believe, 11 spots in this race. You see him there on the screen, right? That's a beautiful car. Love to see it. That's an amazing look there. He, uh, he was actually able to empty, he didn't put the hot tub water in this time. Landon, as we've okay. seen him try attempt to do before with that hot tub time machine. But I think he's in a, a really good spot. I've, I've felt like as long as you're in the top 20, you and you have at least two or three laps of green, you can get yourself to the top 11. So yep. being, being around 19th, maybe that's the cutoff of that. Maybe it's more like top 19. You can mm -hmm. get to the top 11 uh, with a, a slick couple moves on a couple laps. Yeah, I mean, you're just counting on a couple of green laps. A, a big run down the back stretch, Parker, uh, can give you at least two or three positions if you if you get the right momentum and the right gap going into turn one and a push you know that push I, I, and i'd love to hear from the chat uh folks that have driven this car maybe drivers that drove last night uh and you parker i, I feel like this car is one of the best cars on iRacing that simulates the help of a push in drafting uh you know the yep. cup car you don't get much of a push you you get you suck up to people uh where this one you, you can actually draft with your mirror like we do in real life that's a great point and it, it's actually funny because you can you can bump really well with this car and david i mm. mean feel free to chime in you've you've had tough experience with iRacing, but it feels like you you actually you know the reason i you and i might feel it landing is because in real life you, you get a real it's like there's a feel for bumping a car and for every reason this car you really feel that bump and you really understand yeah. that push and the momentum it gives you you said a i don't need to add anything to that i think you nailed it right on the head what well, the hell do well, we I know 
<laughs> big green hit, green flag back in the air. No, I think you're 100% right that these cars have uh, something definitely unique and special to them that you don't quite get in any of the other cars, which I think is what makes them so popular. But as we get back underway again, another nice big jump for the first seven cars or so. But again, single file, such a far cry from what we saw in the previous race. And uh, trust me, I'm not complaining about that. I'm, I'm quite happy to say uh, that that is the case as uh, they go single file down the back straight away. Let's give you an update on some of the bigger names that we talked about uh, in this race, how they progressed along. Donovan Strauss, remember, started last in this field in that Ventrac machine, now currently scored in the 22nd position as we ride on board with Aaron Roth. Uh, in that 13th position. So Donnie Strauss has jumped up from 42nd to 22nd. Ryan Truex in 19th. Ray Alfala in that 30th position. We've seen him higher up than that, but he fell back a little bit there. So keeping our eyes on some of these guys that we've talked about at the top of the show, boys. It's just tough to come from the back. Yeah, and uh, on board there with Aaron Roth landing, and you know he's the rookie that was in the transfer position, and he's still fighting for that transfer spot tooth and nail right now and he's doing an excellent no, job in the two. Oh, he did get really loose off of two it's a lot of good racing all through the field here they're definitely not fully single file is aaron roth is is just you know wisely taking that bottom i don't think you especially in that 10th 11th place i don't think you want to be suckered into going up to the top i think that you can't trust anybody you're not going to get any help. And if you try to go around somebody around the outside, the guy behind you is just going to fill that, that gap on the inside. Oh, look at this. We had a big wiggle right there out of Justin McDuff going into one. He saves it. Roth chops down in front. There's contact. And around goes the 89 of Sean Williams. That's not good news in front of the field. We got three spinning off a of turn two. Oh, my God. Look at that. Who is that? That was David Hensley skyrocketing, landing on all four tires. Caution flag flies. Oh, my God. Where was he going? That's going to collect. <laughs> These guys are going to need some resets, maybe even a toe. That was the big oh one. Oh, my God. Boys. That was the big one. Like, we need to check that uh, that 13 for a, a hung throttle or something. I don't know. He he went full yeet on through there. He didn't, he didn't really seem to mind the fact that there was cars spinning in front of him. And he absolutely did two, three, four backflips on his own. Wow. That was... Uh, <laughs> That was something else is we lost a few drivers in that one for sure. Oh, and that's just, oh, my. In the air. Full yeet. You'll have to explain that one to me, David. I'm not I'm not into that lingo, but I uh, <laughs> I get it. Well, then I don't need to explain it if you get it. Well, no, I, I, I think if I, you get it, you get it. I, you get it. Oh, you my, know, my God. God. The onboard. Oh, wow. That's full yeet Sick. right there. That's that is exactly full yeet. Got it. Now I get it. Now I get it. No no explanation necessary. That I mean, is it, uh Oh my god. It seems like Sean Sean uh in, in the eighty nine had just he had got his nose up underneath and, and made contact and and for and unfortunately for him he ended up paying the price for it. Now some people asking if that counts towards the Ventrac blowover count. No, because that is obviously a rocket launch. Um, so we're not yes. counting that in the Ventrac blowover count. You actually have to physically be blown over by the wind or the air going under. The not ball. launched. Yeah, not launched into the air. <laughs> that was. Do we have a sponsor <laughs> that wants to come for the launch count? Yeah, SpaceX or, Spa or NASA. <laughs> We need one of this, this SpaceX launch count, Parker. <laughs> launch count. We'll keep I'm up with get the Elon count on the phone. We'll keep up with the launch counter, and if a sponsor wants to come on board and build us a graphic, we'll uh, we'll talk to him. Yeah, down, oh, down. My always a salesman. ABC. <laughs> that uh, those are the kind of wrecks right there, guys. That just they make me laugh. They really do. I mean, it's it it sucks when you're in it, um, but when you when you just sit back and you watch it. You can't help but laugh a little bit because it's just a. It's really funny looking, but b. It's just like he, a, he, he just didn't slow down. He just kept his foot in it. It was like I'm driving through this. It just it didn't work. It was great. I mean, it's hard to hit the brakes in these cars though. They don't they don't stop. And I, how much of slowing down for a wreck, especially when you're in twentieth, twenty fifth. Um, are you looking in the mirror as much as you are figuring out how much to slow down? You know, you're trying not to get run over, let alone hit the guy in front of you. 
Yeah, that, I mean, that's tough. And it's hard, you know, when you're basically coming off that corner, you're suddenly seeing cars go everywhere and you're trying to just get yourself the safest position possible. And then a car flies in front of you like that one. And then, you know, you're launching the air. But I, uh, I think, Parker, you know, we got, we got my boy Dylan on three. Oh, hey, it's your boy. It's, it's your it's car. Dylan, he's, a, he's in the Castle Motors car. Event? Well, like, this is the Calista Motors car, and he's he's oh, running okay. seventh right now. It, it, come on, uh, cameras, let, let's see this thing. Get get us a close up on <laughs> zoom in on, on that seventy five. Yeah, zoom <laughs> in on the seventy five. Money's worth. He looks good. Yeah, I gotta get this. But my no family. Part. There it is. Hey, Castle Motors, your friend in the car business, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Wow, That's a classic scheme. Dylan That's very runs friendly Tuesday sounding. night. True sale. Yeah. That's I like right. It. I like it. Yeah, I love good. it. Thank you, Dylan. Good luck, buddy. Like, did your race car look like that growing up? It didn't, and I was uh, I wasn't even born in 1987. Well, no, I knew you weren't um, born in so. 87. I meant like the paint scheme. No, like it's not. Car? No. Okay. No, that that's actually kind of a a throwback rendition of the the modern paint scheme that Dylan runs of Cast Motors. So he's got, got some it. of that red, white, and blue going, and and a little black on the bottom. Well, give us the tagline one more time. Castle Motors, your friend in the car business. Bam. Nailed it. Right. Nailed it, David. Take, taking a look at social media here, guys. Um, I think I think Full Yeet is about to start trending along with uh, <laughs> hashtag Firecracker400. Mm. Uh, Colton Salick checks in with uh, quoting, he went Full Yeet on through there, uh, quoting me uh, with the hashtag Firecracker400. <laughs> so, again, if, if all you guys uh, in chat, whether you're on Facebook or on Twitch, uh, wherever you're joining us from, thank you so much. Hope you're enjoying our coverage of tonight's Infra Challenge 100s leading into the Firecracker 400 on July 1st. But if you want to get involved, pop in chat, say hello. But you can also jump on Twitter as well using the hashtag Firecracker 400 and possibly the new hashtag Full Yeet. Uh, to get involved with the conversation, let us know where you're watching from. Set up any pictures or thoughts that you have. We're keeping an eye on that. And uh, we certainly appreciate you guys. Uh, being a part of the show, we've got polls running as well. Uh, it looks like we had a new poll as we get our uh, big green egg green flag back in the air. It looks like we had a poll for who had the best necktie and uh, in a landslide. Uh, I pulled down the win with 60% of the vote. Landon <laughs> Uh, in a distant second, and Parker barely registered on the board as we go back wow. under yellow flag. And oh, Landon, you're not going to like this one one bit. Don't even look at no. it. No, no, not happy. Uh, we don't want to see, we don't want to see these uh, these accordion wrecking on restarts. Uh, you know, I think that uh, you're responsible for your own front bumper, and it's just just like just like driving uh, just like driving on a road if you rear end somebody. It's your fault. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm as disappointed. I'm frustrated. Like the other, the drivers that aren't causing these. You just get frustrated in this situation. As we look at Brandon Cattell with that uh, barstool sports scheme on that 14 car, but I, uh, man, I just, I don't get it, Landon. I, I, I feel like there's some point you're. If you're in this race, you're like, look, I just don't want to be the one to cause a wreck next. I just don't want to be. So I'm no. just going to do everything I can not to cause a wreck. And yet here we are, just wreck after wreck on restarts. Like, we're not even up to speed yet. Come on, boys. Listen, listen to what the, I wish the drivers could look. Listen to the octave that Parker was just sent into. Yes. Uh, you don't hear that octave very often. And uh, we, we he's been pushed to that. Um, gosh, yeah, I've, that is frustrating. I'm in the chat, they're saying I'm gonna blow a gasket. I'm past it. We're leaking all. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm, I'm running on six cylinders at this point. Yeah, we Blue Media at, uh, just dropped in the snap here. Oh yeah, there's Ray Alfala in the throwback virtual racing school ride. It's a sharp, sharp looking vehicle right yeah, there. He's VRS inching his way, inching his way up through here in 21st. He needs he's got a little bit of time left, a few more restarts left or some green flag racing. Um, so just to give you an idea, 21st is close enough. Obviously, Bobby Labonte. 25th now, that's a good looking ride. Uh, 21st is close enough that I, I think that you'll end up maybe a, a, a second and a half behind the transfer spot on a, on a clean restart. So you could pick your way through there. He might need a little more attrition. That's the 10 spots is tough to pick up though. 
Yeah. I mean, hey, <laughs> really hard to catch, really hard to pick those up under caution. So we uh, we really need we need to get we need this blue emu onboard cam to remove itself from the pace car because <laughs> the pace car will pit and not come out again hopefully and attach this blue emu onboard cam to any other car in the field as we run green. That's what I hope will happen here. We got blue emu He's in the chat down. right now, so we've seen the blue birds in the chat. Blue Absolutely. emu dropping we, in. Big thank oh. you to blue emu. Big thank you to them. Uh, another check on Twitter here. I'm just I'm keeping an eye on the hashtag Firecracker 400 as people continue to use it. William Byron Esports checked in with that hashtag, uh, showing off the car that Byron's going to be driving here uh, coming up later tonight. Uh, Radius checked in, uh, quoting Garrett Smithley with the lick, the stamp, and sent it in his post-race interview. Obviously, they're very happy. They saw their car go to victory lane as well. Uh, full I, just, I just got is, a text uh, from. Well. Uh, I just got a text from Radius. They're uh, they're raising the uh, W flag. At Radius World Headquarters right now, so awesome. big celebrations awesome. going on. They'll be they'll be going late into the evening with that one. Ron Caps might win the uh, the best tweet so far right now. Guys. <laughs> That's he pretty said, good. Some money put up for an iRacing event equals, and it's a plow going through a bunch of cars. <laughs> yeah, yep. That's uh, that, that's what they've been doing. That makes oh, sense. Man. Blake McCandless uh, with another banger here. Uh, Blake McCandless, Mr. F4 Speed on Twitter, with an accurate lip reading. Again, a picture of the three of us at Landon Castle. Purchasing gold is the best way to hedge against inflation with your IRA or eligible 401k. Clicker, right. go on. Shieldhouse, smirks. Please, I ain't falling for this guy. <laughs> Please. Well done. Please, I need to know more. Well, <laughs> buy some Bitcoin. Get rich <laughs> quick? <laughs> no, no. Get rich slow. Oh, oh, even better. It's, just a, it's a hedge. It's just a hedge. Can I get just enough <laughs> to beat the inflation rate? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys are killing it on Twitter. We really appreciate it. Keep it up. This is fun. I love watching this. Uh, seeing the creativity you guys have with all the tweets and, and all of that. Thank you. Keep it going. Keep that conversation rolling. Um, really, really fun. And we're going to continue to do that. It's uh it's great to see how much people are enjoying this, boys. Um, I, I know for me, it's fun to watch, but uh, everyone watching as well, they're really enjoying really getting into it. I'm with you. This is I, I know there's been a lot of caution, but I've enjoyed my time with you, David, and Landon. This has been a lot of fun. Um, we got a long ways to go, Parker. We got a long way to go. I'm going to lose this jacket pretty soon because I'm getting warm. I'm, getting a little warm. <laughs> I'm not going to be the first to take it off tonight. I'm not going to be that guy. I'm waiting for one of you to do it. all do it together? No, yeah, I got it, guys. I'll lead the we way. We all do it together? Oh, good. It's hot. Yeah. No, yep. but, let's see, I, but I don't have a wireless headset. Oh, this oh is, no. This is tricky. All right. Well, I'm off oh, camp, man. so it's fine. Like, Big oh, we green, go green flag back in the air. Let's get some racing in, boys. What do you say as we're getting undressed on the broadcast? <laughs> Uh, but still within the terms of service. We're okay. Twitch will not uh, drop the ban hammer on us, but we might drop the ban hammer on some of these drivers if they don't get these restarts squared away. Still a mess in the back. We think we're still front. green. And that's the positive thing. We're looking at the transfer spot cam here by train service. They're single file. So if we can stay like this, I got hope. They're a little bit more spread out in the back. I'm liking what I'm seeing. So a race for the lead. I, you know, we talked about upfront aggression, Parker. Um, you know, it's a little tame. Brandon Cattell looking to the outside of Malik Ray, though. He's it's kind of a six car. They're pros, eight. man. I can't, you know, I can't count eight or nine well, car breakaway here. Oh, we got one spinning yeah. off of four. That was disgusting. Who was that? That was Jason Skeen spinning like a top out of turn four. And Jason. he gets absolutely destroyed. By Sean Williams again. Oh, no. The 89 cars had no luck tonight. Oh, my gosh. That's, uh, that was... that's a rough one. Morgan Morgan's not going to be happy about that. Driving the 89. It's just that top, man. It's, it's not much grip out there. And when you, your car starts getting tight, you cannot stay in the gas. As Bobby Labonte slips through. Yikes. He does have Park. the right sponsor on board there, Valvoline. We do love to see that. Just not uh, that's that's not using the Valvoline performance to uh, to the best of effect. Obviously, that thing's got a lot of power. The Valvoline underhood. So, well, the Kendall Too car was also involved in that Parker. So the two oil cars <laughs> yeah. have really got hurt there. 
Mm, yes, yes. Uh, looks like you just caught the apron. This is about the time you need to start just letting out of the gas. It's not going to turn at this point. So we've got uh, we got a developing situation here actually um, with Ray Alfala, and if we can get this on replay on this restart, he 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 restarted back in like the twenty first position and was about fifteenth by the before they even got really to the start finish line. He passed a ton of cars, and there is a lot of chatter right now from the competitors about that move, and a lot of people are not really happy about it. Hmm. Well, we'll have to take a look at that one. I'm sure the officials, the officials are as well. That should be against the rules at this time, but we'll uh, we'll see what the final verdict is. Yeah, I mean that was like straight out of Days of Thunder, <laughs> past half the field before. I wondered got how he got up line. there. First, he, for yeah, he's 21st. Then, uh, and then suddenly he's 14th. So that was miraculous. And let's see, you know, six spots to... in one lap. Yeah, they, they, they yeah, all right. They, they slapped the, the penalty on him. They just gave him an end of longest line penalty for that move. So he'll go to the back and uh, but it was fun to watch. It was uh, a good attempt. I mean, hey, you got to try it, right? Yeah. Hey, if he got away with it. Great. Uh, but thankfully, we have some great officials here, the eraser, and they uh, they didn't let that get past them. So we don't let no shenanigans here. No, none. Well, we've had. We've had shenanigans, but uh, nothing like yeah. that. That was uh, that was our I think our first real example, uh, Landon, of gaming the system. I've heard you say that phrase a few times uh, over the past two nights, gaming the system, trying to eliminate that. I think that was our first real glimpse of gaming the system. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 tough because I racing won't black flag you there. Um, but uh, our our rules do say drivers must stay in line on a restart until passing the start finish line. Drivers who move out of line before the start finish line may be black flag. Drivers must maintain pacing speed and a reasonable, consistent distance to the car in front of you. Um, so that's uh, that's a tough one. And see, the reason Ray. we did that, David, is that, yes, back in the day, you'd see them all get up next to the wall and they were allowed to basically get to the outside of the other cars until they'd already started the wall. But what we found is when you did that, you still had a lot of basically the, the courting effect, etc. So this was an attempt to try and clean some of that up and just allow them to get going. But obviously it's uh, that that allowed for them. So all on the bottom, it allowed an opening for Ray to go to. And it wasn't really within the rules to be allowed to do that. Nope, and Ray has uh, brought brought his uh, run to an end with that as well. He's disconnected from the server, and uh, uh, that'll that'll be the end of the run for for time. But uh, he sure made it exciting before he went out. He went out with a bang, I guess you could say, right? Yeah. Hey, tried it, went for it. I can't, <laughs> I can't fault him. <laughs> no, you can't fault him. That does um, move Ryan Truex up to fifteenth, though. Uh, so he's steadily moved to the field. May fight, you know, he's going to be in a fighting position here for 11th once we get back going green. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's right in there. Um, you know, Truex 15th, as you said, Stephen Hill in that Daytona USA car there in 14th. Nick Olson, haven't talked about Nick yet really tonight in 13th. Uh, Aaron Aaron Roth, and he's our rookie there that we're all cheering for in 12th, holding it down uh, as we ride on board with him. And you see uh, Keith Jeffrey, who's right ahead of him. So uh, that's really the uh, the pinch point, if you will. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that, but you know, again, th this race has been great minus the, the restart buffoonery. Yeah. I said buffoonery, but, uh, <laughs> aside from that, the racing has been outstanding when we are under green. Yes. And we've seen that both nights last night in the, you know, the final race of the night had a lot of green flag running compared to the others. And it was awesome. It was great racing. The cars are sliding around. The driver's able to get huge runs. It's just, to, you know, we got to get past that restart and uh you know get these drivers to clean things up but we uh we expected this i can tell you that i know for a fact the firecracker 200 and 400 will not be like this so i uh i i just have a feeling that will not be the case they'll be open set up the drivers can work on that they can have differing amounts of downforce etc and find what they want and i think things will spread out more and we'll have a lot of green flag running Let's certainly hope so as we get ready for the restart here. Pace car is going to go back to pit road. 
Malik Ray is going to control the field for this big green egg. Green flag getting down to it here. Starting to run out of time. Again, another race where we won't quite hit the lap counter, but single file, huge gap back to third. Eddie Kerner, who is not really going, but could tell right on the back bumper of Malik Ray as those two drive away. Keith Jeffrey there on the transfers, transfer cam. I believe is in the position right now for the transfer position, trying to hold off the rookie Aaron Roth. Also, Nick Olsen, who's up 11 spots since the start of the race. Wow, it's great racing back there. As the leaders start to really separate, especially Malik Ray and Cattell. They're getting away from the field. Oh, no, we're going to have get... contact. Nick oh, Olsen and Roth get together. That was they're a rookie error straight. right there. Oh, well, they're oh. not. Billy Rowley is hard in the outside wall, and, and I was watching it, and I was getting ready to yell. And Nick Olsen absolutely voicing his frustration, rightfully so, as he was down low, and Roth really didn't give him a lot of running room. Kept him on the apron going into three, and for Olsen, really nowhere to go. Has to make that corner, and uh, that's that's Roth just trying to defend the Oof. position in a, a place where you just you can't really do that. That yeah, was a little tough, and Roth actually kind of surviving it other than the damage that he's got. Looks like his car's been pretty good. Tough break yeah, for the got... rookie, tough break for Olsen. I mean, that's just tough uh, tough racing, and, and you got to remember that you can go below the yellow line. I mean, if a guy, uh, if a guy's going to make a move, you got to leave him room. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's tough. I mean, I can't put that on the fact that he's a rookie making that. I've seen, you know, top, top line drivers make that same mistake or that same move, but uh, at these speeds, with these cars handling the way that they do, that's that's never going to work. Uh, Parker, would you call that a uh, a low percentage move? Yep, that's what it is. Low percentage. We're uh, we're on the blue moon on board of Malik Ray. And there's something about race two, because race two of night one last night was, uh, you know, kind of like this. It was probably the worst in terms of amount of cautions that we had and least amount of green flag running. Um, and it's, I'm sensing, you know, this race has a similar feel. So there's something about this, the number two race each night that's a little different for every reason, even though this one started off with a lot of promise. Um, I'm looking at the timer, though, and we got three minutes, 15 left right now. Will we get back green? Question. Is it a hypothetical question or do you want an answer to it? Oh, I want an answer. I believe we will. maybe for a lap. <laughs> right. If you're. If you're Ryan Trix, you want to see it. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. want to out. We yeah, if you're, if you're Donnie, Donnie or, or Truex uh, or, or anyone right around there, you want to see one. If you're Will Weber or anyone in front of him, you don't want to see a restart. So, Because <laughs> you know you know Donnie's going to be full bore. You know Ryan's going to be uh, on it as well. He's going to be channeling all that marquee pool and spa power that he can. Oh, goodness. And Aaron Roth not very happy himself. John back and forth with Nick Olson. Roth has his own opinion of what exactly happened there. And uh, Olson telling him that in every imaginable universe, he's wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you can imagine the frustration for the drivers and especially for Aaron Roth there. I don't I don't think that was they anyway, wait directly his fault. Um, and he was doing a he's great racing job. hard, man. Yeah, he's, he's racing doing a hard. Job. He's so. been in the transfer spot. He's been in contention all night. Uh, you know, he put in a lot of practice this week. We've even seen him in the practice races. Uh, he, you know, he put himself in position to have good track position. That that rookie license, that, what does it even mean, Parker? Uh, that's 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 what these e-racer races events are about. This is an event. It's not a race. I'm not going to discriminate against uh, licenses and, and i-ratings. We want to celebrate it. Uh, we're not going to put a minimum on any of our entries. We might we might have different formats. We might have more consolations, more advancing stages. But, you know, when we put on events, we want everybody to sign up uh, and enjoy themselves. And I think part of enjoying yourself might be getting reamed by race control every once in a while or <laughs> or feeling the stress of a transfer <laughs> spot because we're not going easy on these guys tonight. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, see. sometimes a good uh, a good ass chewing. Uh, I can say that, right? Yeah, who cares? Okay, sometimes a good ass chewing. It is the we'll, internet. We'll set you straight. Um, 
And and I know, I mean, I've had my fair share of it when I've been aggressive. Uh, not 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 a, not lately. As I've gotten older, I've mellowed out and not as aggressive. But back in my younger, wilder days as a sim racer, uh, that sounds so stupid. Um, younger, wilder you know, days. Uh, you know, I, I would I would catch my fair share of uh, of of slack from race control or or other competitors and and all of that. And and sometimes you take it to heart and. Um, you know, it's all a learning opportunity. It's it's all it's all an, an opportunity to to improve, and you know, maybe it was at somebody else's expense, which is unfortunate. But uh, that's racing. Yep. Yep. It, Nothing it, like learning on somebody else's dime, right? Right. Right. That's how right. I've always done it's, it. <laughs> it's easy to tell other people how to spend their money, and it's easy to learn at somebody else's expense. Yeah, my new financial advisor to my left. Uh, you know, I, uh, I feel very confident in most of my investments. <laughs> that buy low and sell high. That's all I so can tell So what's going to happen here? Wait, the, the timer has gone zero. We, we saw this last night. It potentially could be the green checkered. Yeah, it's, uh, final lap here. Well, yeah, so, one lap to, to settle like it. We're we racing one here. Lap. All right. What oh boy, one? one one lap dash. Here we go. Oh, look, Pick there your will favorite. be there will be no cautions. So the next flag is the checkered flag. And is that from the wall? Up into one. That's oh, gone. they're spinning behind them. I think Truex made it through. Truex is through. Donovan Strauss is through. Stephen Hill is through, but they're catching this slower car off of turn two. Oh no, Truex get hooked! He gets hooked by Strauss in the outside wall. Collects Hill. Collects Strauss as well. They're all wrecking all, all over the next straight away. None of them are going to make it into this race. We are looking for that 11th spot. That is Jill Chatelaine. Jill Chatelaine in the 11th position right now with a hungry host of drivers trying to catch him. Matthew Groh is going to be the one trying to chase him down to the checkered flag. It's going to be Jill Chatelaine. He's going to make it in. Unbelievable. Malik Gray spins across the line. Bobby wow. Labonte, 13th, so close. Oh. Man. Truex was in position, got taken out down the back stretch. Oh. Yikes. Brandon Cattell is going to take this win, but a lot of drama unfolds, and, and especially, uh, especially for John Kinder, who was in a position to transfer in. He was He restarted in that eighth position and got, I don't know if he just got a huge shot in the rear from Brendan Merzda and it we, shot Kinder out of the see. outside wall. Well, that, that's that a, that's a great stretch. finish for the meaningless win. We need to see <laughs> a replay of 11th off a of yeah. turn two. Here we go. We're on board here. I don't know who this is. This is shield Shadowland. Yeah. So we're on his on board. This is what he's going to see. Oh, and that's the, trick getting hooked. Part. Yeah. Just oh, Moses. Right. Wow. Moses! Moses! What? Oh, the move! He's parted. Wow. We got it. Unbelievable. Can we, if we can get another angle of Truex there, I'd, I'd like to see who turned him. Because Donovan Strauss in there as well. You got turned. Donnie turned him as they're uh, trying to work their way around John Kinder, who was slow. Truex stayed right on the was. O line. Donnie was on the quarter panel and just hooked him. And I think Kinder had gotten the wall off a of two, and that's how they uh, they ended up where they were. But ah, oh, devastating for Ryan Donovan Strauss. Man, they were right there. That's uh, that's that's a tough one. If you're John Kinder, and he was very upset, very upset at Brandon Merzda after that, wondering why Merzda gave him the bump for no reason when they're all in. And that set up that whole sequence of events. And you see Truex get hooked there by Strauss. Kinder yeah. into the wall, the 86 of Hill into the wall. And it was just chaos behind them. But for Truex, just trying to get around and he was going to be good. But Strauss not in line. And we saw that a few times last night. Guys not in line. And you get on that quarter panel and push. That guy's getting hooked. We've got uh, wow. we've got Jill Shadlin in, in coming into the booth here. Let's see if he wants to talk to us about that finish. Jill, uh... <laughs> What on earth did you see coming off a of turn two on the final lap? Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, the car was completely tossed. Um, I, I stayed on track. I uh, I was waiting for a crash, and uh, it happened. 
Uh, <laughs> 11, I think. We, it's, we, it's we, good, we, yeah. We watched your we watched your onboard and I mean you could see ahead of you the car you probably didn't even know who it was that was Ryan Truex the NASCAR driver <laughs> um, who, who got hooked by Donovan Strauss I mean these are these are some heavy hitters uh, right in front of you just taking a dead right into the wall did you even know where to go or or did you just how did you hold on No I I say uh, I don't lift I don't lift flat out and uh, yeah, it <laughs> it went good, but uh, yeah, it was fun. I I made the older race uh, with uh, Ryan. Uh, I think we we could have a, a run in the finish, but uh, yeah, a lot of yellow flags. Yeah. And Jill, wh where are you from? Switzerland. Switzerland. Are you yeah. racing there right now? Sorry. Are you racing from Switzerland right now? Yes. Yes. It's. Uh, 4 a.m. Wow. Yeah. How did you find out about this event? Uh, Twitter. No way. That's awesome. Well, we're really yeah. glad to have you, man. That was, uh, yeah, that was an incredible drive. Thank you. <laughs> well, I, uh, I'd say we we'll look forward to having you in the, uh, in the qualifying rounds. And yeah. uh, good luck with making that. It, it goes open setup, so you're going to have to mm -hmm. uh, start tweaking on that thing. Yeah, we'll have a big, big work on the setup, <laughs> but uh, we will see. Well, Jill, we'll be walk we'll be watching for you. I know you got to catch your breath, calm down <laughs> a little bit. You know, maybe, maybe uh, have a have a nightcap before you you go to bed. I I bet you won't even get to sleep before the sun comes up. No, but I uh, will do the the twenty four hours of Le Mans uh, in a few hours, so I will have a little sleep. And uh, <laughs> go on. Awesome. Double duty. Love it. Amazing. Love it. Well, good luck at Le Mans. We're, uh, we're proud to have you, and we're, we're excited to follow you next week. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's pretty cool right there. Very, very cool. As you look at the finishing results here, the top 11, Brandon Cattell, Malik Ray, Eddie Kerner, Kyle Trudell, Jared Ickes in fifth, Will Cooley, Dylan Gooden makes it in, Brandon Merzda, uh, Mer yeah, Merza uh, in eighth, Keith Jeffrey ninth, Will Weber in tenth, and the man we just spoke to, Gilles Chatelaine in eleventh, making it on through. As you see, the rest of the results go through on your screen. Heartbreak for a lot of guys on there. Bobby Labonte just missing out on it, uh, and and you feel for uh, for those others involved in that melee on the back straightaway. But uh, what a second race! Um, good racing, drama at the end. Uh, wow, that was uh, that was that was wild was and ah uh, man you know we it's like when we're under green it's so awesome so let's just get more green flag running because it's so yep. cool to see sounds really well, simple i'll uh let, yeah. quick check at twitter you guys <laughs> you are going to get a kick out of this uh using the hashtag firecracker 400 uh you uh, your good friends freddie craft uh the, the great spotter uh, checks in and says, I can't watch Landon Castle and Parker Kligerman look at each other and talk to each other like they're standing next to each other without laughing. I don't know if they're on each other's screens in that direction or not, but it's funny AF. <laughs> um, Thank you, Freddie. I don't want to look at him either. Secret we'll keep to ourselves. That's, uh, that's, it's good to know. It's funny yeah. to know who's who's out there watching. So uh, shout out to Freddie, everybody out there watching. We appreciate it very much. And again, if you want to get involved in the conversation on social media, on Twitter, use hashtag Firecracker400. We're keeping an eye on that. And uh, uh, we're seeing a lot of love for Jill Chatelaine. Emily Butler uh, checks in <laughs> with the, uh, with the Jean Girard uh, gif. Uh, Seth Eggert, the Motorsports Rev, uh, from Kicking the Tires, checks in with a Moses gif as well. So a lot of love for Jill. I think everyone was really excited to see him get into that 11th spot. It was really cool. It's the kind of that's the kind of stories, you know, that we uh, we love to see. You know, a uh, someone internationally that you wouldn't maybe associate with the NASCAR, you know, racing, and you wouldn't see probably in a real NASCAR race. But here we are, you know, with that ability on uh, on iRacing to have anyone around the world join in, and uh, that's what we saw there. And then to be able to advance and beat out some huge names like Ryan Truex, Bobby Labonte, Ray Alfala. I mean, that's an awesome thing to see. And that's just, that's what we want to happen. We want to be so inclusive to allow everyone to have the same opportunity. And maybe we got to, as Landon said, make a couple tweaks in terms of maybe how we get to these eventual <laughs> final cutoff races. But 
I think uh, I think it's just you know one of those things where that's the stories we'd hope would come out of a lot of these races. Well, there you go, Parker. I mean, it's uh, it's going to be good racing. We're well represented. Moving along, you saw Dylan Earnhardt Jr. coming right up. He yes. got a big star. We went from a Hall of Famer to a Hall of Fame inductee. So yes. he's your best friend too, by the way. Oh, <laughs> did he write that? Maybe, he must, he, no, he he didn't. He definitely didn't write that. That that's a lie. Have. They're making fun of me. They're making fun of me. Um, you know, <laughs> Dale Dale works for me at NBC, and I think he's a cool dude. And you know, I'd like to be his friend. Um, also in this race, Landon, we got. The, we go from probably, you know, the 15-time most popular driver in real-life NASCAR to the 2019 most popular driver in the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series, and that is none other than Casey Kerwin, the popular streamer as well on Twitch. He uh, He's in this one, so he'll be good. I mean, a tough one to beat. Yeah, I mean, and, and on our real driver status report, our real driver status report... Um, I don't know why it says real driver. Yeah, I always call mean? it physical world <laughs> driver. <laughs> These are all quotes, real drivers. Quotes. That's it's right. It's real driver status report. I mean, you know, Garrett Smithley kind of has the most success right now. I mean, who am I leaving out? Because we were so close with Ryan Truex there. Uh, but Garrett Smithley in pure dominating fashion in race five. Uh, I'm I'm. Man, I, I really wanted more out of some of our real drivers, but we've got some good ones coming up with Dale Jr. Um, and William Byron, obviously, in, in our last race, race number eight. But coming up here, I mean, this this race is stacked. I mean, you we really only mentioned Casey Kerwin, uh, driver for Denny Hamlin Racing. But uh, we've also got Kane Cooked, an NIS fixed legend. So this is a guy that knows how to run, as I mentioned earlier, these distance races. Uh, Nicholas Morse, a road to pro veteran. Byron Daly, uh, he's an engineer, uh, a NASCAR engineer. Obviously, our co-driver on the NAS Boys Endurance Team. Parker, we ran the 24-hour uh, Nürburgring. So we're definitely stacked in this field. And I also want to shout out a good friend of mine that's in this race, Jason Fellenbaum, who used to race uh, DMP, which was Dale Jr.'s league uh, back in the day. Uh, very competitive, wanting to get back into it. And, and he knows race strategy really well. He's one that I'd want to see in the 400 miler. I, you mentioned Byron Daly. He uh, he is an engineer in NASCAR for Richard Childress Racing. One of my good friends, actual good friends. So maybe unlike Dale, be my best friend. But he also is a former e NASCAR driver. He raced in the uh, top championship for a couple years. So he uh, he is no slouch when it comes to i racing. And uh, he he may have qualified a little bit far in the back, but I'm sure he's a, he's a smart racer. He'll find his way to the front. I can see well, there you Parker, go. a little, Look at this little, view. Cloud, little cloud cover here moving over in yeah. Daytona. Um, as we see, we're looking through this starting grid. Uh, Shane, uh, Shane Liff on the pole here with Alec Martinez, Scott Ratliff, Tony Ball, Colin Bowden, and Kane Cook starting sixth. Gonna be Chris Stump in the uh, seventh position there. Casey Kerwin highlighted him, rolling off from the eighth spot. Nick Morse. In ninth, Josh Tin, uh, Chin in 10th, Colin Feller 11th, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that 12th spot, Austin Edwards 13th, Troy Sabat, uh, Sabat in 14th, Caden Rush 15th, Randy Arms in 16th, Trey Normile in uh, 17th, Justin Melillo, keep an eye on him, also representing the FTF Racing Leagues in 18th, Alex Good 19th, and Connor Parisi in the 20th spot. You got Brian McSwain on the inside of row 11, Christopher Stonerock. Dallas Sullivan, Jeffrey Stewart there on the outside of row 12. I already 1,600. Kenny Kibbe, Jason Fellenbaum, your buddy there. Byron Daly, my buddy. 6,200 I rating. I didn't even know he was that high. That's awesome to see. Gilliam Hesnell, Hunter Reeve, and Dylan Smith on the outside of row 15. Stacked field throughout here. Mark Vaughn on the inside of row 16. Jacob A. Hope, Justin Halverson, Chris A. Wood, and Michael DiMiaggio, Cody Bird rounds out row 18 well it's john hinchcliffe brandon watkins jonathan g d joe Gok, thomas delago doug burns and dustin Betch beach besh rounding out your field um i do want to make mention so I, I mentioned the cloud cover coming here um so we we had some showers come through here in daytona uh the weather is cooling off the track had to be cleaned off. Um, it's it's still a little warm, 
but there's showers in the area. So we, we had a light shower, a um, little bit less usage on the track here. And, uh, and it's getting a little cloudier, like dark skies, could see some yep. rain in the area. What's our temperature right now? Did you just, uh, 87 degrees, the winds are high, they're up at 10 miles per hour of the northeast, so this is some of the most uh, different conditions we've seen out of all the prelim races. As it's we been hot, but it's just darker. You see darker skies yeah. in the area here. Um, and obviously that wind is picking up. That wind is Parker, I got up. bad news for you. What's that? It's being reported on Twitter that uh, Dale Jr.'s best friend is actually Chandler Parsons. Um, so you might have to fight Chandler to get that title. I got I got removed. I knew it. I knew it. I Once they put that graphic up, I knew it was over. My chances yeah. were sunk. Yeah. Well, unfortunate. At least I got you guys. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, that, that was yeah. confident. Yes. Yeah, you got us. You got us. You, what was the that that uh, what was that theme song from Toy Story? You got a friend in me, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I was hoping for. All right. Thanks for the support. Go listen to that song, you and, can, and you'll be okay. Land in silence is deafening right now. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he left, to be honest. Uh, we get said here. Pace car is off. Big green egg. Green flag in the air for our third infra. Uh, challenge 100 here. 40 laps, 40 minutes as we are side by side across the line. A gaggle of cars. I'll try not to say gaggle too many times. I think that's the first time I've said it, but they're too wide going off into one. We'll give you a gaggle counter here soon. Thank and they you. are. This is a little bit of a friskier start than we've seen throughout these uh, prelim nights. This is uh, normally they're getting down that bottom fighting. But, oh, wow. Oh, poor Liff, and he just sort of quick cleared himself the outside. That was really tight. Park makes me nervous when I see him running up front and below the yellow line when there's when they're two by two single file below the yellow line's okay but below the yellow line two by two makes me nervous as we're looking at dale earnhardt jr here smartly kind of bringing the car down off of turn four giving himself some room dale's as good as anybody at keeping a car in one piece but can he do it in an infra challenge 100. he also drives with one hand so this is you know which is just incredible in itself. We've all seen the videos. He's in that filter time Chevy right now. And definitely, you know, you see, you probably go on board and you see these drivers wheeling it and they're tugging at the wheel and Dale would be sitting there with one hand, you know, just chilling, easing his way around the racetrack. So this, I think these cars were designed for his style and his, uh, the way he likes to drive. So I, I expect good things out of him. You think there's easing around the track in these cars, Parker? No, but he does, he makes it look easy. I mean, he it, does that, that one handed stuff. That business is I mean, that's that's a you know, that's up front program right there because I, I can't do it. So Ohio is boy, I, Chris, is that because he's, a, that he's in, a real driver? That's yeah. <laughs> a, a quote, unquote, real real driver. Driver. So, so speaking of real drivers here, I've got Chris Stump, who I grew up racing uh, late models with from he's from Ohio brand and ASA with him. Good to see him. He's been practicing a lot, running some laps. Stuff like that. He's in the transfer spot. Pretty cool to ride on board. It's real hectic in the transfer spot right now. They're all over the place back there. All right, we just had a poll go through chat, Parker. You're going to like this one. Uh -oh. uh, we asked chat on Twitch, who is Dale Jr.'s best friend? Is it Parker Kligerman or Chandler Parsons? And you'll be happy to know 67% of the vote went to you. That's that's exceptional. Thank you. Thank you, chat. Well, you know what? Put that aside. We've got an insane battle here for the transfer spot. I'll let Dale make the choice of who's his best friend, not the poll. But um, that's the uh, I'm looking at Caden Rush and Dale Hurt Jr. There now on the transfer cam. Oh, we get a, we get a caution out. We do have a wreck off the banking in turns one and two. It's John Hinchcliffe, uh, not the mayor of uh, Hinchtown, by the way. Uh, John Hinchcliffe and Thomas DeLago getting together. And it looks like it started actually in front of DeLago with the number 10 of Michael DiMaggio. Just got loose going into the quarter. We've seen that a uh, hundred times already here tonight. Chases it up the track and gets absolutely starched. Starched out of the corner. Uh, and uh, that sets off a chain of events there. That was DeLago first on scene that absolutely clobbers him there. Nowhere for DeLago to go. Uh, hit him so hard, I do believe DiMaggio uh, disappeared. He exited the park. Oh, he gone. oh wow. <clears throat> yep. That was a launch. That is a lot. And we, you know, we've seen, this is the, the 
second or third time we've seen that, that when they go five laps, oh! But not a Ventrax blowover count. These are these are launch. These are SpaceX rocket launches. That was so, a launch count. Still looking for yeah. sponsorship on that one. Yeah. Well, I, I keep telling SpaceX, saying it like they'll come to us, but you know that that on, if he's well, watching. You know <laughs> what I was saying there, Parker is, you know, we get five laps on tires, and it just seems like that is the lap that the right rear starts is goes over its peak uh grip temperature and the cars start getting free into the corner you got to start lifting just a little bit uh it's hard to do that it's hard to want to lift in these cars because you you feel like you can run wide open um all the laps but you just give up a few feet from the car in front of you lift it keeps your car stable you can go right back to wide open uh when the car lands it's just when the when that transition in the banking um when the car loads in that transition you just gotta back off a little bit gets a little light i've got a bigger problem here i, I need a refill what's that i need a refill here <laughs> oh brother he needs a refill all right go go get it go you know what i'll take one since you didn't ask i'll yeah, take you want one me, you want me to one for the booth here yeah, let's get around here. Let's let's get around uh, for for the booth. Uh, we're looking here uh, at the top right of the screen, and we're looking here at uh, somebody that I've known for a very very long time, uh, well over ten years, probably fifteen years myself. Justin Melillo in the number fifty three Radio Shack machine, uh, of course uh, representing FTF League, uh, uh, a league that runs still in the uh, the old sim plus here on iRacing as well, but also a writer uh, for the racing experts, and has really burst onto the scene. Uh, as a premier provider of coverage for uh, sim racing, iRacing, and particularly the eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series. And it's been so fun to watch Justin cover our sport uh, and our hobby uh, in such a high fashion way. He's been going traveling to the tracks, covering the real life racing as well. But I know he was really looking forward to this event. Nervous as all heck, uh, but... He knows super speedways. He grew up doing super speedways and right now scored in that 15th position. So good to see Justin there. And if, and if you're not following him already on social media and, and you want to follow somebody who provides excellent coverage, in my opinion, I can only speak mm. for myself, excellent coverage of real life racing and sim racing as well. Definitely go look him up, give him a follow, give a follow to the racing experts as well. Uh, and uh, just uh, uh, really cool to see. And I, I've always been a, uh, a, a fan of Justin's work and to see what he's doing now, Landon, uh, and our side of things is really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's he's given the sport a lot of good coverage. So always seen that. A good looking car too. How about that Radio Shack? I love throwback that. scheme. And yeah, the there's, there's a, on special, the a special decal uh, on the side of the car as well. Uh, you'll see above, next to the Papyrus logo and above the FTF logo, right behind the the uh, the the number there. Uh, is a rose with Bud on it, honoring uh, his grandfather, I do believe. Um, I don't have the full story on that. Uh, I do believe that is the case. But uh, so we've certainly heard when we talked with Blake McCandless yesterday uh, about the uh, the meaning behind his livery and, and why he was running it. And uh, Justin Lowe, as you see there on the side of the helmet as well, uh, and, uh, you know, guys taking the opportunity to do something special with their paint scheme uh, to, to promote something that's important to them. Very cool. He's got his got his work cut out for him. He's in P15 right now. Just need a couple more spots. He's a wheel man. We've seen in uh, had to race against him a couple times in the Monday Night League that we do, and he's he's been up there battling me for the win late in races. So I uh, I've got I've got confidence in Justin Merlo. I think he can get it done here tonight. He's uh, he's fixing to burst onto the scene. I have it on good authority from the driver himself. He just made a a large large investment into some very serious equipment uh, to upgrade his uh, his driving equipment. So I do believe we'll be seeing Justin Melillo tearing up the virtual racetrack uh, with uh, with his nice new equipment in the near future. So uh, keep an eye out for him. Awesome. Very cool. Tough competition <clears throat> around this transfer cam as we come back to green. 
Absolutely. We'll take a look at the transfer spot cam, the trans service transfer spot cam. Big green egg, green flag back in the air. Alec Martinez leads him down. Kane Cook there in second, Kerwin third. Colin Bowden in that fourth position and Tony Ball in fifth. Side by side, Junior on the high side had a run and got blocked off by Ball. Ball goes back up to block again. Junior wisely lifts, but boy, that was that was a big move there by Tony Ball to block off Junior. <laughs> he did and Dale was going to the outside. I thought he was going to make it three wide for a second. He poked the nose out there, but decided not to do it. He now sits behind Ball and just pushed him down the back stretch trying to get around i believe that's joshua chin and dale is committed to the outside lane as we see so many drivers on the bottom he's committed to the outside lane right now seems like i guess nothing's really changed whether it's 1987 2007 2011 2020 well 2018 maybe 17 uh dale loves the top and i also noticed dale doesn't have a hard time getting someone to follow him as a caution is out Ooh, we got right oh, here trouble. on the front straightaway, John right at the Hinsworth. flex. Oh, I think we can queue on up, Parker, for Jeffrey Stewart. Uh, is it a blowover? It's not a blowover. It's a, a I don't know what the a hell puff? that was. Is it a puff? He adds the Ventrac blowover count. That's not a blowover. It's like it was a grass rollover, a grollover. A growl. Well, hold on. Well, let me see this on replay. I'll be the judge of this. All right, so we're getting spun off four. That's well, that's unfortunate. We really shouldn't have done that. Oh, all right, we'll call that a blow. Nah, that's that's a blowover. I'm calling it. That's a bed track blowover. What are we at? We're at five now. Put up the graphic. Cue the music. That's a blowover. I don't know. I'm I calling mean, it a puff. What? All right, <laughs> don't cue it. Don't cue it. I've been denied. Oh, wait, I what? got it. I uh, got it. Yes. That needs to. Wait, wait, you know what? Put it, make it a poll. Put it in chat. Is that a blowover? Is that a grow It's over? official. It's, it's on yep. the graphic. The graphic never lies. It is that is like written in stone at this point. AJ, get us a chat. Get us a poll yeah, in the chat. Let's do this graphs, one more time. Actually. Oh, that's a classic. <laughs> oh, the car definitely got light, but that's not a blowover, Parker. The car's got to blow because from the under. Because of the air blowing under it. Man, is that because you took the over and I took the under? Maybe. Are we, we, both, we both took the under, didn't we? What are you well, doing, Parker? Well, what, I can't remember what I picked. No, <laughs> I picked the 8 to 11. I picked the 8 to 11 one on the poll. I picked okay. The, or 9 to 11, 9 to 11. You were 8 or under. So I, I really need to up these numbers. Whatever it was, I took the under. <laughs> there was multiple choice. We're on board here, Jeffrey Stewart, and this is... Uh, what a ride! Oh, oh, I'm like leaning in my seat right now. <laughs> oh, oh, and that's not. A, not that reminds me, wasn't it? Uh, was it Jordan Taylor that during the um, what were we racing? Oh, it, it, it was in Monza his, Madness. Yeah, he flipped his his rig. His rig flipped over the motion rig. He's got a motion rig, and it just went and and <laughs> then flipped the other way. I mean, everything is mad in Monza Madness. That is insane. <laughs> I mean, we always make the joke. People always want to say, "Hey." Uh, you know, like, what, wouldn't it be cool if in sim racing, like, when you hit the wall, like, there was something that shocked you or something like that, Reverend, and then that was like, the first time. actually penalized you? Yeah, actually penalized you physically, and I was like, that's the, I sent right. that video to all those people, I was like, look, it actually happened for what? Right. He wrecked well, the rig. We, oh, we had man. an unfortunate oversight in the poll. Um, uh oh. We had, we had an unfortunate oversight in the poll. We had, uh, rollover uh, was the clear winner, but the other option was only a rollover, not a blowover. Um, we need a new poll. New, new, we need a new poll. New poll. We need a couple co drivers up here. Up in the top three, Kane Cook, Casey Kerwin, most uh, popular driver. Is this the the we, we need to have Casey Kerwin and Dale Jr. and see who the most popular driver uh, matchup is going to be. That, that's our next poll. poll. Yep. We need that in the poll. Casey Kerwin versus say, Dylan Hart Jr. Well, we should say, by the way, if you're watching on anything other than Twitch, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, even YouTube, That's I right. believe, uh, that this is all happening on Twitch, these polls. So we'll at least we'll tell you the results. You just obviously can't vote in them unless you were to go over to the Twitch. That's right. So. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Landon Castle right there. Right there. 
There you have it. Uh, let's point out Kane Cook, by the way, the car that he's driving. Uh, a very unique one, by the way. That is a Nissan Skyline. We saw Celica's yesterday with uh, Hamlin and Kyle Busch. Today is a Nissan Skyline for Kane Cook in second place. That is a uh, that is a sharp, sharp looking car. That is awesome. I saw that on Twitter. Uh, I kind of freaked out. That is super, super cool. So you get a close up shot of it coming towards us. I mean, you can tell they whoever painted that whether it's himself or someone else, that is incredible craftsmanship there to make that look as realistic as it does. It's got those rear lights, the quad lights in the back. Uh, that's just so cool. I love that. Now, the question, if you're a Nissan fan, you got to wonder, is that a uh, is that a beginning of the year or a uh, end of the year skyline? Obviously, the R30 um, was at the beginning of 1987, then halfway through 1987, the R31 was launched uh, to replace it. So uh, if we get a chance to talk to Kane at some point or maybe we'll reach out to Twitter to ask him if it's a uh, an R30 or an R31, and I'm sure he can tell us. But nonetheless, did a you sharp have, looking car. Did you have uh, I, magazine, David, growing up? Uh, I, was, I was a road and track guy. All right, all right. You're just, your Parker, knowledge of the tuner culture is incredible. I got an update for you, Parker. Okay, all right. Uh, and I, because we got to get the graphic updated before we go to green. But Grollover beat Blowover by a wide margin, 89% to 11. So please, can we Wait, update that for Blowover match? Wait, 89%? It was 89. It's 88 to 12 right now, percent. Okay, well, so I'm going to say We need to take one off the Blowover suspect. counter. Back, Put it back down. That is suspect Move it. because... You, <laughs> no, you, you didn't change it back down to four. Back down, right. or what? what is it supposed to be? <laughs> it should be four. That's right. Okay, we're going green here. We had our first rollover of the event as the big green egg, green flag goes back in the air. Uh, we need a lot of new sponsors. We need a launch counter. We need a rollover counter. <laughs> My goodness. But we are back underway. And uh, Junior, not the greatest restart. A little bit of a gap in front of him to Tony Ball, but I guess maybe he wants That's to see okay. Ball will block him again. I think that push that he's about to get into turn one is going to close the gap. It's a little, looks like Martinez losing a couple of spots on the outside. That that top, when you get to the front of the field, the outside groove is just not where it's at. You need to be on the bottom for those first five or six cars. That allowed Kane Cook to get to the lead of this thing in that Nissan Skyline. The first laps led for a Nissan Skyline at Daytona in iRacing. I think I can say that with serious confidence right now. Uh, there isn't many of those out there right now. And uh, doing a great job as Alec Martinez continues to fall back. He's now falling behind, I think, or he's, or he's just in front of Dale Earnhardt Jr. there. There's Dale looking good. Notice the half bucket seat. Uh, the yeah. seat in that car that Dale is, is sitting in is oh, a real replica. Dale's, oh. Dale's in the fence. Hang on to it. He got, he got it. He got moved. it. Nice little lift. So you can see a little right oh, front damage. Oh, they don't got it further in the back. They don't got it. And we got another yellow. Ooh, this is an ugly one. This is, oh, what in the world happened here? This is the 22 of Brandon Watkins, the Pennzoil machine. Uh, throwback to, uh, I don't know if it was Bahari oh, Racing. Company. That might have been before Bahari Racing. But Watkins lost it by himself and then carries it back up into the track into Dustin Besh. And, uh, That's a tough one. That is rough. He gets catapulted a few times, and Chris Woods involved. Uh, Jason Fellenbaum in the blue emu machine. Look at the miss that Fellenbaum had in that blue emu machine. My goodness. Wow, That's a man who knows where the brake pedal is. First. Wow. Let's get those cameramen up on Fellenbaum. Blue emu would be proud of that one. I'm going to tell you that right now. They will be. That was incredible. He found the brake pedal, and that's how you use it, folks. Here he is, right here in the corner of your, right in the middle of our screen. Little gap in front of him. See smoke now on the racetrack. The wreck's happening. Oh, ugh. oh. no way, no way, no way, no. Wow, way. Jason <laughs> with the move. <laughs> that is the miss of the night. This is the miss of the event so far. Wow. All right. Yeah, that's, you think, so. Is that better than Jill? Is that better than Jill's Moses moment to get into well, the uh, top Jill, 11? Jill's was clear clutch. for him. Yeah. It and they put him in him. a transfer spot. What just happened there, Fellenbaum just had to literally wheel his way through there. He had cars coming at him. He had then car coming back up the racetrack. He had to slow down the right amount, get the thing slowed down, and then turn it down the, the racetrack to get away. That was 
incredibly impressive. He absolutely deserves the uh, the move of the race or the of the event so far. Definitely the 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 driving skill right there. That was cool. Well, I can tell you. Uh, social media, we've got hashtag firecracker400 going. We've got hashtag full yeet going. And now we've got hashtag grollover going as well. And it it puts a smile on my face for sure that uh, that we've got this working. But you guys are absolutely killing it on social media. Please uh, keep it up. Use the hashtags. Let us know your thoughts on this event. And uh, it's fun to see everybody chiming in. Uh, taking a lot of pride in this event and uh, grow over who would have thunk we'd have made something like that parker um i just checked my phone here I, i'll see if i'd love to get an interview with him uh but our, we do have a statement from ryan trix uh he says that was poo yep i got a similar so, text yep. I did get a similar text yes i i'm so sad for you know what i'm gonna wear my ryan truex shirt um, in, <laughs> all day tomorrow. I'm just going to wear it all day tomorrow. Of his uh, Firecracker 400 hopes and dreams. Yes, I will. I will wear it tomorrow all day just uh, just because I'm so sad I, he didn't make it in. Well, I do have to say, he did text me this, and I have to agree with this point. He does have some of the worst uh, racing luck in iRacing I've ever seen. The, the guy is pretty is very competitive a lot of times, but just can't seem to uh, to buy a break in any of these big events. But Hey, you never know. We'll, there's going to be more. We'll be doing more of these. There's more in the future, and maybe that will just start to turn around for him in the future. But he uh, he, he has some rotten luck. Hey, we were <laughs> just riding in, on board with the uh, Blue Emu onboard cam with Dale Earnhardt Jr., who um, at least just won a poll on Twitch here, on the, on my Twitch channel. Uh, 75, 74% over 26% to Casey Kerwin. The most popular driver <laughs> heads up matchup. So now Dale has to deliver on the on his his pole win and drive up there and beat Casey Kerwin. He's going to need to do it with a little bit of right side damage. It looks like. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think it's an honor just to be put in any sort of most popular polling with Dale Earnhardt Jr. So for Casey Kerwin, that is a whole new level of stardom uh, yep. in motorsports world to even be put in that poll let alone gain any percentage versus him. So we know uh, he's pos- he's got to be the most popular driver in the United States and one of the most popular in the world. So uh, that is definitely, I mean, that's impressive for Casey to get that many. Good for Casey. You know, yeah. good for Casey. He's got, he's but got you know a what? A strong fan base. He does. Fan I'll, base. I'll tell you this right now. There, there are some NASCAR purists out there who would be absolutely incensed especially in 1987, but certainly maybe even now, to know that a Nissan Skyline is leading a race at Daytona International Speedway that's featuring American stock cars. It, well, we didn't, we didn't only say this event was only you know for drivers to show up. This is for Nissan to show what they could have done in 1987, and we're seeing it right now. I drove an early 90s Skyline, not quite as old as this 87, uh, that was a tremendous car and it really made you think these they were they were quite ahead of their time back then so i'm not surprised to see it being out here in front well he's out front leading the field to uh to this restart here big green egg green flag back in the air it's cook and kerwin out front the two coke series drivers that's a lot of uh c sounds going off there it's alliteration i'm sure james pike is loving that somewhere as he's listening but Caden rush blocking defending and that's going to really set back tony oh. ball and we get a quick caution again land and look away don't even look at it you what don't want to see it Just, that's uh, it i'm going to the game chat it's, uh, <laughs> it's ugly do it's it, ugly it's ugly. Uh, Jacob Hop uh, involved is it was just a massive accordion effect uh, about the middle portion of the field around the Dallas Sullivan, Connor Parisi, Austin Edwards machines. Um, yeah, not good. Uh, Scott Ratliff, Melillo, all in that area right there. And they just uh, expand, contract, expand, contract, and people start running each other over. I'm just not looking in anger. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> frustration. Uh, oh. hey, what, what, what is happening there? What are you doing, bump drafting off the restart? It's not gonna go anywhere. I, 
Uh, nope. We need uh, Blue we Jay. need to get an F in chat. We need an F in chat for Raw yeah. Gator. Uh, Trey Normil uh, got absolutely flip flapped over after contact with I believe the three of Mark Vaughn, but uh, Raw Gator YouTuber and Sim Racer. Um, yeah, you saw it there. That's uh, that's a big yikes. Not, I don't know. It, it wasn't. It was past the start finish line. They were all getting up to speed appropriately, and then it just just ran into the back of the car in front, and of course wasn't gonna be able to hold because it came in with about twenty miles an hour more in speed and uh yeah that's what happens well i mean it, it never should have been uh pulled out of line before the start finish line anyways it's clear as day in the rules uh, obviously we had to enforce that on ray alfala in the last race so uh but we'll keep moving it's how how long are we into this thing we've got we, we should have a timer up somewhere we're, about, we're halfway in laps we're about halfway we'll in laps into the timer here soon 15 15 50 to go so We've got some time left. We can still see some green flag racing. Obviously, Dale Jr.'s dropped to eighth. Um, Shane Liff at 11th. Troy Sabat, 12th. Chris Stump, all racing for the transfer spot. Uh, and uh, I want to shout out to Scott Ratliff um, as well in P14. He's been committed to the Firecracker 400, Parker, from day one. Um, actually, put up a lot of the original practice sessions. Uh, Scott oh. did, so... Uh, yeah, he was he was very active in Twitch. He, he runs that MGM car, beautiful car, by the way. Uh, love the coloring and and the wheels on that one. Uh, so yeah, so thanks a lot to Scott for for all of your your money and hosted sessions, your investment in putting up some practice sessions. That's the great thing. Hey, media. we yeah. haven't probably talked about it <clears throat> enough, David and. You know this, and Landon and I know this, but the community mm. in iRacing is awesome. And yeah, we've incredible. all made so many friends throughout this whole community. And, you know, there's there's guys like Scott who step up and have not no vested interest in this other than, you know, just to help us get some more practice out there, help other drivers. We're looking at Blue Emu and the Blue Emu onboard cam. It's just Blue Emu everywhere. Big supporters of this community, Landon, but – it's uh it's just so cool to see all the different ways the community help each other out they step up to help events like this we uh you know this entire event our whole team is just people in the community and uh you know i think it's it's a cool thing and if you're watching this and you're not a part of the iRacing community what's holding you back get on in here it's a great time exactly sign up now there's always specials on iRacing.com uh there's always some sort of package deal that you can buy uh community is what brought us with jason here Running the Blue Emu house car, we saw AJ Henderson uh, came from came from my Twitch. The Controller King drove the Blue Emu house car into uh, the transfer spot last night. Jason's looking to do the same here. Jason, if you follow his Twitter, he follows the NASCAR races really closely, knows race strategy really well, calls it uh, pretty consistent. Been a sim racer for a long time, so we uh, we love it. That's what we're trying to build here, Parker. Just a big old group. To, group of guys and gals that want to go racing yep i agree i agree and uh we've said it before and we'll say it again we want to be inclusive for everyone so you know it's uh we're not going to discriminate based on i ratings and license levels and that sort of stuff you we love that stuff and it's really cool that it's there and that it's being tracked we want to see your progress that stuff but we want to give you an equal shot in every one of these events to have uh to become you know, someone that goes out and beats Dale Earnhardt Jr. or Kane Cook or Casey Kerwin and, and becomes the next Casey Kerwin, potentially. Yep. That's all well said. Uh, and and I'll, I'll, I'll go one step further on this as, uh, as we get ready for the restart here. If, if this event interests you and you weren't a part of it, don't worry. There will be more events. So uh, the next time something pops up, just make sure you keep your eye on social media accounts, Eraser, uh, as well as Landon, Parker, myself, anyone else involved. And you'll know when the next event comes up and you can get involved as well. And again, remember, no uh, no restrictions means anybody can join. So if you didn't get in on this one, you can get in on the next one. Big green egg, green flag back in the air as we are underway. Uh, a scattered start once again throughout the field, but it looks like everyone's minding their P's and Q's for the most part as Kane Cook continues to lead Casey Kerwin, a single file train, much like we saw in the last race. And Dale Jr. is the first car out of the bottom lane right now in that front pack. 
He is. Oh my Damn. gosh. What is the deal? All what? right, what happened here? Boys. Let's, let's I, take a look. Oh no. It's oh, uh, no. Brandon Watkins again in that Pennzoil machine, and we saw it so many times last night. Eats the wall, right side tires jump off the air. He loses all his momentum and then just comes down right into the racing lane, right into the path of Jeffrey Stewart in the 72. And we hyped him up so much. Jason Fellenbaum could not miss that one. A little oh. bit of damage there. And uh, oh. more carnage. Justin Besh world? one more time. Jacob Hop again. Same guys that were in the last wreck, it feels like. Yeah. Well, I think... Uh... See how the officials take that. That might be a uh, subject for removal from the uh, from the event, unfortunately. It's tough. It's very tough. You know, we, we saw it so many times yesterday um, of guys just getting up into the wall uh, by themselves. And, and the way these cars react when they, they get together with the wall is different than, than the other cars that are here in iRacing. You know, you drive a modern uh, cup car or truck or Xfinity series vehicle uh at daytona and the, it's not going to react exactly like that but for these cars uh parker you mentioned it yesterday the tires dig into the wall it sort of ramps up a little bit uh and, and it's really hard to control but you know you got to still try and fight and be aware of of where your car is in relation to the pack and uh and, and coming down into the the way of oncoming traffic trying to control it, it's just a very hard thing to do it is and it's you know they're modeling a very heavy, big race car on skinny tires, and they're just, you know, they're 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 hard to run into a wall and get away with. They're on bias ply tires, and it's just, you know, these big behemoths that don't have a lot of grip. They don't have a lot of downforce. They're made with, you know, they're heavy. It, it's and, tough. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough, and they get sucked in the wall, and it's hard to remove that big old beast off yep. the wall. So that's just the way. But hey. You know, better luck next time. You know, get lots of practice. Keep it one piece. We'll always have a spot for you. Come race with us, Jeffrey. And, uh, you know, who knows? Hey, look, I can promise. I promise you put up the poll in the chat right now that the Firecracker 200 and the Firecracker 400 will combined won't hit the amount of cautions that are in one of these prelims. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. I'll will... I, I don't know what I'll put up. Those but. two races. How many cautions are we seeing in these races? Like seven or eight before they yeah. before they finally end? Too yeah. many. You think, That's not many. Too, too many. many. Let, let's say the 400. You think the Firecracker 400 will have less than seven cautions? Yes. No. Guarantee it. Really? David, guarantee I guarantee it. it. I guarantee it. Yeah. What, are you, what are you putting on it to guarantee it? Uh, all right. Why don't we... Um, I don't know. What can I offer? What can I offer? What? what why, Parker? What, why do you think less that for a 400 mile four times the distance of this race the same amount of cautions well because i think the difference is you're gonna have no resets you're gonna have a you know drivers who with the way the payout is everything it's pretty much fair throughout the entire field you're not racing when you're outside the top 11 these races you're basically you know you're out right so you're doing everything you can to get something done you're to take low percentage moves a ton of risk when you get into the firecracker 400 it's going to pay 100 bucks mm. just to start it. You paid $25 to get in this event. You've made – you tripled your money right then and there. So yep. I think, uh, you know, it's a definite situation where in that point, you can be smart about your race, take care of your race car, knowing there's no resets. We won't have these cautions. And I want to add one more point to that, Parker. Um, because we're using open setups for the Firecracker 200 and 400, yep. these drivers will have been building their cars – for two weeks and what did we learn in the fake 500 when we had to run open setups uh with the lotus 79 we spent all that time building a setup we were invested in our cars and i didn't want to wreck it and we actually had a reset in that race and i, did I still didn't mine. want to wreck you did wreck yours actually and i actually <laughs> i did i wrecked mine too but it wasn't my fault <laughs> and yours wasn't your fault uh no the first never really your I, fault. With, with with no with no uh, with no resets and an open setup, we feel like these guys are going to invest a lot of time in their cars. They're going to try to make the race. They're going to sit through single car qualifying, and they're going to get to that 400 mile race, and they're going to say, "By God, I am not going to wreck in the first hundred miles of this thing." Well, I uh, think we're going to get a restart here. Hopefully, hey, look, green to the end. Let's go, boys. Let's do I it. I like it, boys. I like it. Let's go. 
I, I like there. everything that you're saying, Landon. I like the fact that you're you're hopeful that these guys will will uh, race with a brainstem attached and realize it's a long race and and not do anything silly. But again, we heard it from the winner of the first race tonight, Garrett Smithley, uh, who who said it himself. You you put on the helmet and then you become whatever he said. I'm, it was it was something eloquent. I'm gonna butcher it, but he put on the helmet and everything goes out the window. That's just the my race dad car always driver says my dad always says their helmet is too small. It's squeezing their brain. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> the only thing is, well, we don't wear helmets in sim race season. We got the green <laughs> back. Some would argue there's not much to squeeze anyways, but that's a separate discussion. Big green egg, green flag back in the air. Kane Cook once again leading the field down into turn one. Casey Kerwin, Colin Bowden on the rear bumper there. Alec Martinez, Caden Rush, everyone single file. Darrell Jr. Uh, is going to pull out a line there, go to the high side. We've seen him try and do this multiple times, but he gets blocked off by Nick Morris. Morris jumps up to take oh. that run. Jr. falls back, and look at this. Joshua Chin right there as well in the quarter pound. That's close. These guys are racing so hard, Landon. This is what we always talk about. You're in. What are you doing? Why do you got to go like this? To go off I know, but Dale, our junior, he's looking. He's almost not in. I mean, he's dropping back. He's in ninth now. He doesn't have as much of a cushion anymore. And we've proven in these last couple of races that have made it to the to the white flag. I don't think you want to be in 11th on the last lap, Parker. No, you don't. We saw Peter Bennett in the last race hold on so intensely for that spot. Dude, the, it came down to the, the start finish line side by side. Look at these front cars though. The outside lanes where you come in, we're seeing the cloud cover come over right now. It's getting very cloudy in the racetrack. That's gonna add some grip, especially down in one and two as they enter the sun here in three and four, right? As I said. Right along with Dale Jr. and the blue emu on board. Right on the rear bumper of that 93 Joshua Chin. I mean, we're, we're on the transfer cam. I can't rem I can't figure out who's in the transfer spot. <laughs> you can just uh, throw Troy a blanket Sabbath, right over right the now, breakaway. scored in that 11th spot, Landon. It's Troy Savage, Troy Shane. Uh, yep, uh, Shane Illif right there is, or yeah, Illif, wow. I think is my left. That's, Guys, that's this, a pack of cars. Look at this. this. They're the too wide. We have seen yet in the prelims, in the Firecracker 400 event. This is insane. It's making me it's like somebody told me it's time to go. It's like somebody said it's time to go, and they are going because we're getting down to the end of this thing. Malillo's there uh, in 12th, battling on the inside. I mean, they are too wide, seven David, my, rows deep. What makes me worried right here? Off of oh, four, no. That leader. Oh, no. Justin gets turned. They get turned in the middle of the front straightaway. Troy Sabbath's around. Everybody's around on the front straightaway. That's a track oh. blocker, and we got people plowing through as well. Oh, my God. Malillo gets in the air again. Oh, Melillo up and oh. over, and my heart breaks for him. Oh. That is hard. I was just saying, David, I am worried about these guys running the outside lane. You've got the leader on the bottom. You can clip the bottom and get loose. The outside lane, if you're if you're within eight feet of the wall off of four, it's going to suck you into the fence. And and I couldn't even get the words out. Bam. Oh, looked like a bump, Looked like a bad bump draft there, maybe. Man, and everyone just That's plowing in here. I mean, and that tore it's up so several cars. I mean, there was nobody that got through that thing. And they're so vulnerable just sitting there in the track, and you're hoping, you're praying that you're not going to get hit. And I don't know. I don't know if the message never got relayed to Thomas DeLago or not in that Kellogg's machine, but he came in at such a huge rate of speed and absolutely starched Justin Melillo from existence. And it's just so oh. unfortunate. So many cars. I that, just uh, was, didn't need to get torn up there and they just get torn up more nothing justin did nothing wrong there no he got hooked again and like truex got hooked like ed carpenter got hooked just oh my gosh um ah, that that hurts and he's to watch the right there that hurts to watch oof that radio shack machine taking a beating that's uh gosh that's tough to that's personally speaking that's hard for me to watch that i know justin's yeah really had a lot into this and it meant a lot for him and he was in the right spot and uh god he just didn't have the luck to get through that and and uh that that's that's a tough one so that's moved i mean that's moved some some kind of some fresh drivers up into the top 10 here um i mean i'm looking at tony ball nicholas moore shane illiff 
Randy Arms is back in it now. Scott Ratliff is back in it in 12th in the game. Yep. Um, we've got two minutes to go. Are we gonna Are we gonna get to green here, or is this gonna end? Is this gonna end under caution? Or is it, are we gonna get one of those nice one laps uh, shootouts that we like? Well, we'll... Myron Daly up to 16th. He's gonna be really close if we get a restart. It's gonna here. be tough. Yep. We'll see. We'll see what race control says if we get. Uh... If we get a restart or not, as, as you got a few more glimpses of this looking from Randy Arms, uh, you saw the chaos out the back bumper there. Just uh, tough scenes right at the end of the race. I mean, that's that's some of the most heartbreaking stuff right there yep. to go through is is you put yourself in the right position um, and 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 then it just gets taken away from you through no fault of your own. And that's that's one of the cruelest parts, I think, Landon, of, of racing, yep. whether it's real life or sim. Um, it can just be taken from you like that. Yep, that's right. I mean, it's. Ugh, I don't know. I, I sometimes I, I want to feel like you make your own luck, but then you just look at for some of these and not just Justin. I mean, the guys behind him, these people, these drivers that have just been trying to keep it in one piece, and it is hard to drive through a wreck here at Daytona, Parker. It is narrow, oh, and these is. cars are hard to stop. They're hard to stop. They're hard to turn. They're hard to make to do anything, and. You know that's what makes stock cars fun that's what makes stock cars stock cars is that they you know they don't want to do anything well and they don't do anything well maybe accelerating is about it so yeah you're uh you're always fighting them and they you know that the i always think about these cars are what i imagined when i was going to go drive a stock car drove like right right and like what i was going to drive when i got to the cup series and obviously technology has moved far past these cars and such but it's uh i think that's why there's so much fanfare around them is this is what you know as racers we just love these you got to manhandle them you got to yep. wheel them you got to you know just feel like you're such an integral part of the equation that uh it's just such a fun time are we gonna yeah, get we, a restart here yeah i think we are i think we are <gasps> oh no, it, it says final lap oh we're not gonna get a restart well, i so think we're getting the, one from, from let's see from what Hold i'm told on. we're getting one well, I, I don't think so because if we're, it's under caution and we see final lap, so. I hope we that's... get one. I mean, I would love to see a restart, a little more chaos, but um, remains to be seen. Got yep. uh, if not, then so be it. We got our we got our top eleven, and uh, unfortunately for Scott Radliff, he'll be on the outside looking in along with others. But uh, we'll we'll anxiously await to see what happens here. Uh, juniors in at the moment. If we don't go back racing. So we'll keep an eye on the lead cars here. See what happens is the pace car is going to turn left. Do we get a real restart here? We do. Yeah, they're coming up to speed. They're racing, racing. Oh, okay. We're going to get a one lap yeah, dash. Attack, I believe right here. There we go. Okay. We got here comes junior to the inside. There. Junior yeah. to the inside underneath Martinez. Oh, he's going to oh, get no. into it. Oh, no. He's going to get into Hold it with Jin junior. Junior losing his momentum. He's back to the ninth position. Big gap oh, behind him. Man. Here comes Shane Inliff. Shane's like going to have to right. do something here. He's got a big, big gap back to the 12th position. Byron Daly Damn trying to junior. get around Scott Ratliff. Byron Daly going for it. This is for the, the 11th spot. Ratliff has it. Daly wants it. This is the transfer spot right here. Byron Daly, as the leaders start spinning, they hold on to it. Losing momentum. They're getting up into the wall. Ratliff up into the fence. He's out of it. 11th is Byron Daly. Byron Daly to the line. They're bumping off each other. They're beating each other. Back to the line they go. And it's going to be... I don't even know. I think it's Shane. He got 10th. He got 10th. Daly with 10th. Shane. Shane gets in. Darren Hart Jr. finishes 8th, I believe. Casey wow. Irwin wins. That was insane. There was so much going on there, guys, between Junior and the leaders and the transfer spot. People beating and banging off of each other. What? Oh, my goodness. I'm going to be picking this one apart till the start of the next one. Wow. <laughs> I mean, let's that get, was can we insane. get a, can we get Dale's on board? <laughs> I think on that. I think that's what we need to see. He gets knocked in the. He rode it through the grass in the one. There was enough of separation. He kept it going. But Byron Daly, guys, restarted 15th on that last lap and finished 10th to advance through. Here's Dale's on board.
What a drive by Junior. Look at him. Perfectly timed it to get to the inside of Alec Martinez right there and then gets into it with Josh Chin in the 93. I don't know how they saved it, but you saw the effect it had on Junior's momentum. The only saving grace he had right there, boys, was the fact he had a huge gap behind him as the cars were really slow getting up to speed behind him, and uh, that gave him that breathing room that he needed. They'd given him a gap, and then all hell was breaking loose behind him. It does into turn three again, as we had on the here as well in front, because some of the leaders get sideways. That checks them all up. He gets a huge run here on some of these cars. He has to almost back it up a little bit, gets super loose off of four, and then behind him was a ton of cars coming, like Byron Daly, the huge run. And uh, wow, that's uh, that's a hell of a finish. That is a hell of a finish. Let's take a look at the uh, at the finishing results here quickly before we uh, before we transition to our fourth and final race of the night. And it was Casey Kerwin pulling down the win. Caden Rush coming home in second. Colin Bowden in third. Alec Martinez in fourth. Josh Chin fifth. Tony Ball in sixth. Nick Morris makes it through in seventh. Dale Earnhardt Jr. makes it through in eighth. Good for him. Kane Cook falls late but holds on for ninth. Byron Daly drives up through a bunch of people to get to 10th and Shane Illiff, your pole sitter going to finish in that 11th and final transfer spot, boys. What a drive for those top 11, a lot of drama to get it done. As you look at the rest of the finishing results. Yeah, that was uh that's Kenny Kibbe on the outside, looking in Connor Paris, Hunter Reeve, Dylan Smith, Jason Fellenbaum back to 16th, Randy arms, Dallas Sullivan, Troy Sabbath, Austin Edwards, Alex good and Cody bird. 22nd. Hmm. Unbelievable. On down. Unbelievable stuff. Heartbreaker Just, from Justin yeah. Malillo. Chris Rostovac, yeah, no. Jake and Hope, yeah. Scott Ratliff. These are the uh, Chris Stump, Chris Wood. Those are the ones that, uh, you know, it just didn't didn't play the way they wanted. That's tough. Uh, Justin, uh, of course, going to, to Twitter with the hashtag Firecracker 400, a picture of his car flying through the air and one simple word, devastating. And no. uh, I think we all echo that sentiment very much. Um, God, that's uh, we've seen a lot of crashes, a lot of people not make it in, uh, not move on. I think that's probably for me the hardest one right there. Yeah. That's uh, that's tough, and I think the um, you know anyone who's in that position and gets taken out like that, it's just it's so frustrating because you know you're there, you're there, Landon, and then it just right. gets ripped away from you. You can just feel your heart sink. Truex in the last race, similar position, um, you know, it just you, your heart breaks for them. But that's racing. Well, we've uh, a little treat here for you guys in the booth. We're gonna find out. We're going to find out from none other than the man himself who drove through those last couple laps. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to sort this out here. Um, I think on, I know who you're grabbing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm inching him down. Uh, I can't, can't get the uh, Discord to scroll here, but I'm inching him down. Um, Dale Earnhardt Jr. on that last lap. Uh, can, you, can you walk me through, because I'm going to be a little hard on you for a second. What were you doing on that last restart going into turn one again? Oh, man. I was trying to make a move. I don't know. I, had, I thought I saw a hole. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like it. Well, I, uh, you know, I, I said this about Kyle Busch last night who made a big move under the yellow line. And I said, man, I think he's been waiting a long time to make a move under the yellow line and not feel like it's and not get disqualified for it. Maybe that was some inspiration. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, I, I've not got a lot of time in these cars. I really haven't even tested. Uh, I got into this practice that you had right before this race is all I've, all I've done in the last 15 days uh, to prepare for this. But um, uh, so I'm kind of learning where the corners of the car are, is, you know, and in my mind, looking at the re looking at the replay, I thought I was next to the yellow line. I had another half car length down there to get next to that line, and I kind of wasn't where I thought I had positioned the car. But um, a lot of fun. Appreciate you guys putting this on. Thanks for the opportunity, um, and it's good to talk to y'all. Yeah, thanks, Dale. Exactly. Thank you, man. Well, we appreciate, appreciate having you. Look forward You've to seeing you yeah. qualifying. Yeah, I have to find a little more speed there, but this is such a cool deal, and uh, hopefully I can. I'm just looking forward to 400 miles, man. These cars are a lot of fun.
<laughs> well, Dale, I got a question well, for you before we cut you loose. Chat was uh, was wanting to know if you had both hands on the wheel for that one there on the last lap. Uh, probably not. Um, <laughs> I just I don't know. I don't know. I can't drive with both hands on the wheel, but um, I think I'm slower or something. Like my reaction slower. One hand's fast. Well, there you go, Dale. We appreciate you. Impressive. <laughs> you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> Got a lot, a lot of work to do. Build a setup, get some qualifying speed. You know, I don't know if you remember two round qualifying. I know you do actually, because I had to ask you about two round qualifying. So, yeah. Well, I got some connections, and you know how that is in our races. Sometimes they put, sometimes they help you out, and sometimes they don't help you out. So we'll see where it goes. I'll uh, see if I can find some speed if I if I get into the show, you know, to be able to have a good race setup. But it should be a lot of fun. Great program. You guys are first class. I know that this took a lot of work, and you know, kind of been following along all the all the all the effort you've been putting into this uh, as a group, and it's pretty awesome. So, um, you guys make sim racing a lot better. All right, Dale. Thank you, thank Dale. you very much. Good luck next week, and we'll see you. We'll see you. Well, there he is. Uh, that was great. Cool. What a finish. <laughs> what an interview. What a guy. I mean, so this we, is the... Well, think about this. We entered tonight. Not one real driver had made it through. Quote, unquote, real driver. Sorry. Real driver. Uh, NASCAR driver had made it through. We now had Garrett Smith in one race. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the next. We got Byron Daly, the, the, uh, the engineer, getting in there. We got... And now coming up next, we got some big names as well in this next one. So we could potentially see a couple big names. Oh, yeah, we've got, uh, we, we, yes, yes, we do. Well, we've got uh, weather affecting the track condition. This is a uh, more interesting weather is rolled in. We'll let Landon elaborate on that in a moment. We got William Byron in this race uh, who made a name for himself, obviously in the real world with Hendrick Motorsports, but certainly during the invitational challenge while the world was on hold, he was tearing it up uh, on the iRacing side. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets along here. And Logan Clampett, uh, somebody that uh, Parker knows very well from the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series. And uh, <laughs> I think Parker will elaborate on, <laughs> on what's in the parentheses <laughs> there of should have one. So landing quickly to you for the weather. Okay, so uh, we do have a weather report from uh, Joshua Mendoza, our race control uh, for the race eight drivers. There's a special weather advisory in Daytona. Heavy rain and thunderstorms have moved into the area uh, for the start of their race. This is real. This is this this happened in Daytona. We had big rains, thunderstorms down there. Um, obviously, we can't simulate the rain um, at the speedway. We couldn't race in the rain anyway. So uh, we've got to dry the track, blow it off. Uh, we had a lot of rubber on the speedway. That's all washed away now, so the track usage is is way back down to 20%. The weather's overcast, uh, should be about 76 degrees, 100% humidity, and it's breezy, Parker. Those, those we saw those winds coming uh, in in um, Infra Challenge 100 race seven. So now moving through race eight after after the rains have come through, we've dried the track. Uh, we've still got some 12 mile an hour uh, northeast winds. So it could be a lot of grip in this one. Could be a lot of grip. I think it's going to take. Maybe a few laps to get some rubber built up on the track, but I mean this is this is a track temp. Um, actually, I'm gonna, Parker, you might have the track temp. Uh, it's quite a bit lower than what we've had. I mean, it just just an hour ago, it was 80, 87, 88 degrees was, yeah. in Daytona. There. Yeah. Uh, now it's seventy six. So it's Six. Wow. Cooled off an awful lot. Um, a beautiful floor today. Let's get into the starting grid here. I'll let you take Let's it away. Let's do the starting grid, and uh, and then we'll circle back to the Logan Clampett story here in a moment. <laughs> but Gary Cronenwet uh, is, is certainly a guy to keep an eye on. We'll, uh, we'll see where he lines up here, but it's going to be Ryan Doucette. Uh, starting from the pole, William Byron Jr., we just highlighted him, uh, to his outside in second. Michael P., Michael P. Frisch, there in the third spot. Will Norton from fourth. Dylan Nadwadney in the fifth position. Spencer E. Burns in sixth. Eric Smith from Slip Angle Motorsports and the big green egg machine himself in seventh, Liam Brotherton in eighth, Logan Clampett from Burton Clergerman Esports in ninth, and Josh Parker from Joe Gibbs Racing in 10th. And Christian Sanford there on the inside of row six, TJ Majors, the spotter for Joe Logano in the Cup Series there on the outside of row six, Jacob Barbie on the inside of row seven, Zach K. Keller on the outside of row seven, Daniel Hollis, Spencer Tart, Steph Marinick, 
and Travis Spots on the outside of row nine there with a 1,561 I rating. Gary Cronowet, Manuel Tolatino, Dylan Smith, Chris Downing, Matt Busa from the Ian Ascar Coco I racing series for Williams F1, and Gavin Hibbs rounds out row number 12. Well, Parker, row 13 is Brett Puncari and Dylan Thomas. Row 14 is Corey Kutina and Joe Agi. Alex Greats in row 15 with Logan Hagerman. Moving right along to row 16, Seth Eggert. I'm just looking at the screen here because I don't have my timing and scoring loaded up. Colt Cecil, row 17, Peyton Johnson. Philip Young in row 18 with Colton Harvey. That's going to be Brandon Hughes in 37th, Gerald Underwood 38th. Uh, Chad Garlisi Jr. in 39th, Ian Rudd in 40th, Joe Morgantini, I'm sorry, Joe Morganti, um, Morganti in 41st, I'll get that, Gregory Farmer 42nd, and Adam Eisenhower 43rd and last, Parker, quickly before we get this green yes. flag, what is the deal with the Logan Clampett thing? Well, <laughs> all right, so that graphic does look like it was made by me, but you know, may I may have only uh, insinuated that that was what the, the graphic should have been, but basically, if you were not watching the uh, E-NASCAR Coco iRacing Series All-Star Race this past Tuesday, uh, Logan Clampett was leading on the last lap into the last corner at North Brooksville in that Valvoline Tundra and got spun out and wrecked basically by Blake Reynolds in a very aggressive move uh, that I wasn't too happy about. So I feel like Logan deserved that win. Um, and now he's here in the Firecracker 400 trying to make it into the top 11. And I'm feeling pretty confident he can get it done. Uh, the kid's got a lot of skills. That's why he drives for us. There you have it, folks. From the man himself, Parker Kligerman. Couldn't have said it better if anyone else had been asked. Big green egg, green flag in the air. The first one here for the final. Infra Challenge 100. And it's going to be Ryan Doucette leading him down with a big push from behind from Michael P. Frisch there on the inside. William Byron in the outside lane. That's Will Norton pushing him. And I love that William Byron car. As you look at Logan Clampett in the transfer transfer spot, a little early for that right now. We're going to have a long way to go, but look at that paint scheme for uh, William Byron, the old what a photo on the front hood. I think that's so cool. They knocked out of the park, William Byron Esports, and he's going to knock it all the way into the lead here as they go off their turn three. Side by side. We've seen so much side by side racing. Remember the track temps are down here. And Daytona for race number eight. Uh, track temp is 98, so it's a, almost 15 degrees. As we got some trouble, cars, cars sideways down the pit road. road. No caution yet. That's uh, Seth that Eggert. Comeback. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. What a rejoin by Alex Grates. He made it work. Oh, it wasn't quite like uh, Ford Martin did yesterday, but that was pretty good. Didn't glide all the way through the grass and perfectly up in front of the field like Ford the Martin. France, no. <laughs> Transfer spot cam on, on Dylan Nadwadney. He's uh, he's a streamer. D Natters spent a lot of time practicing. He's got great speed here at Daytona. He's been very committed to this event. Yeah, we love Natters. Absolutely. He's uh, He had a lot of focus, put game face on and all of that uh, to be ready for this event. So uh, we'll be keeping an eye on him as you look at the trans service transfer spot. Cam with Daniel Hollis right there in the 11th spot. Stealth Marinac right around him. TJ Majors. Spotter TJ there in that 22 machine. Parker certainly wanted to keep an eye on. Yeah, he is. He just uh, slotted into the 10th position. He's a solid racer. TJ is an OG of sim racing. He's done. He spent so much time on the service back in the NR2 in three days. Racing with him a long time, and he's a really smart race car driver, too. He, there's, uh, I know he's a spotter, and so I think a lot of times that gives him like a perspective outside the car. And so when he's in the car and he's sim racing, he thinks of the bigger picture so often because he just always seems to be at the end of these races in position to win, no matter what we're racing. And uh, I think he'll find his way up there before the end of this one. Now, Parker, I, I don't know. Oh, as William Byron clears himself in front of Doucette for the lead there. I, I don't. Oh. oh, we've got a caution on the speedway. I thought we were going to set a new record to get to five or six laps. I was just going to say the same thing. I always say what happens when we get five laps on these tires, Parker. <laughs> These oh, cars get slick, man. Give me, give me some insight. What happens? They These things get breath. slick, man. <laughs> they, they just get slick. I mean, this is a of all the stacked fields. I this has got to be a. I mean, I can't believe I'm just glancing down the leaderboard and I see T.J. Majors just barely racing for a transfer spot. Looks like Philip Young there, a little trouble off of four. 
Yeah, it just compounded oh, and as, uh, as they scattered around him. I, I don't know. Oh, and that's a bummer for the 6'10 of Dominic Rigney. Yeah, I just kind of did a good job of missing him right here. Lost too much momentum. I had to go through the grass and bam. Oh, yeah, that was a little I, early on. I, 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 that's a weird one for me for Philip Young. It's like. I don't know. He bounced it off the wall. I get that. We've well, seen that David, a million times already. But you, you got the a, second you hit off the lift. wall in the trioval. That one's a little. That one. Uh, that one. I don't really. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these cars get out of shape. The spy supply tire needs to be loaded. Um, you just have to lift and regain your composure uh, in these cars. I mean, I've been preaching it. it it's the running that outside lane. Um, you just gotta lift, man. That's just, if you hit the fence, you got to back off. Got to lift. The race car drivers don't like lifting, though. That's the problem. I think that's why we're seeing what we're seeing is it's against the programming of a race car driver to lift. You want to try and right. keep your foot in it, save it, make that Hollywood save, um, and, and move on without losing too much space because you, you make that first mistake, you start giving up time, you start to panic, and you want to try and recover from it. And the first thing that you want to do is keep your foot in the throttle to try and recover from it. Because, you know, if you lift, you're giving back more right. time. So it's it's a, a tough thing to, to train yourself to do. And right there, um, not the most spectacular wreck, but, uh, you know, excluding that, a pretty good start to this one, I would say. It, similar to so many of these, we get to that fourth lap or so, and then, you know, we, we just something happens. Like, I, I was watching it, and I'm thinking, huh. All right, I've seen this before. I've seen this play. I've I've seen this this whole movie right a uh, couple times over. And we're gonna get the fourth lap. Maybe we'll make just the fifth, and there'll be a caution. And sure enough, there's a caution in fourth lap. So that's uh, ah, I just I just want to see them do a ten or fifteen lap green light green flag run. I think it would just be so cool to see these cars sliding around. And maybe we just gotta wait till the firecracker two hundred and the four hundred landing. But I uh, I had hope that we would see at least one here in these prelims, and uh, we just haven't. Maybe this is it. Maybe it's coming up next. Maybe, Parker. I mean, these guys get to build their setups. We've got 70-degree spoiler on these cars. I mean, you think there's a lot of stability built into them. I can imagine there's some guys that are going to be laying that spoiler back, trying to get some straightaway speed. But they're, they're going to be a handful on old tires. Yeah, they will. Yeah, well, that's something, you know, if you're uh, if you're watching this, you're wondering about like the format of this whole deal. So these were the prelims. We had 344 drivers enter. Uh, basically, the top 11 from each of these eight races will get put into two round qualifying, where the 43 fastest will be able to race in the Firecracker 400. The other 43 will be subbed into the uh, Firecracker 200, and then there's a couple alternates for that one. But the uh, you know the the reason we keep saying this about the setups is those races will be open setup so they're mm -hmm. fixed setup now they'll be open and that's where we think you could see guys laying you know laying that spoiler down or finding a different setup or making the setup drive better for them they'll still have to deal with variable weather that will be you know in tune with real life but it's the hope that maybe they'll uh, they'll be able to drive something that's a little bit more to their liking per se compared to this fixed setup but I don't know David. I, uh, I've had faith, I've had hope this whole time, and I've just been let down most of the time. Well, that's racing for you. Sometimes you, uh, you, you hope for the best and you just get let down ultimately, but, um, yeah, we get ready for a restart here. Time, yeah, I know. I know. It's, uh, it, 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 we had, I think we had to go through some of the growing pains here as we had to, to pare down 344 drivers yeah. to just 88, and we were going to do it through racing, with a difficult car that I think some people were underestimating how difficult it is to drive this car That's right. uh, at a difficult track with all the bumps and undulations and, and imperfect surface. So it's sort of the perfect combination of, uh, mm. of elements for a driver who may be a little bit on the inexperienced side, but we've certainly seen drivers with lots of experience struggle with it as well. So it's truly a great test of skill. Um, and to take all of that, take 344 of those people, pair it down to 88 for the two-round qualifying, and pull 43 out of that to go into the 400 and the others filter down into the 200. I mean, you've really accomplished something at that point, but it wasn't going to be without some bumps in the road. And again, no pun intended, given the, the nature of the track. But, um, you know, we want to see green flag racing, and perhaps we didn't see as much as we wanted through the last two nights, but we've still seen some great racing when they were able to do it, and 
You know, well, I think there's something to be said for that. I agree, and there's a lot of cloud cover. This is the coolest track temperature we've seen. 98 degrees on the track, 76 ambient temp. Highest winds, though, so let's see if we get this green flag, if we can get some uh, solid racing. Big green A, green flag back in the air, and William Byron Jr. down and away. Great jump for him. Alex Grates there on the inside as the lap down car will slot in between Byron and Norton. Norton wasting no time. Going to jump back down to the bottom to take that spot. Oh, no. Ooh. We got hit with the caution. Oh, match. both of you look away. Just go find a calendar of cats or kittens or puppies yep. or something. You don't. You just let so... See it. So how about the weather, boys? What's the weather like where you are? Well, I, I want to look at this grid. I, I, can we not look at this? these top? First of all, I mean, you look at the top nine. I mean, uh, Logan Clampett, you got two world championship drivers, Eric Smith and Logan Clampett, that are seventh and eighth right now. I don't think that's safe. I mean, if we see green flag racing like we had had in the last couple races where, you know, Dale Earnhardt Jr., uh, was not safe in those spots until the very end. Riding with Joe Morganti. Oh, and there it is, the checkup. A good save on that part, though. Yeah, it's just, it looked to be right around that, that Brandon Hughes, Joe Morganti, um, oh Gerald Underwood. Oh. There's some huge gaps right there. Huge, huge gaps. You, you could see where Joe was doing a good job of trying to not hit the car in front of him. These guys back here, though, just not looking ahead. I mean, you see the field is checking up. Can't be on the gas. Every tough. I, it's, tough. it's just, yeah. And it's not the first time we've seen it, which makes it even tougher. I know it's driving you guys up a wall. Um, yep. You know, it, it's. I don't think we'll see as much of this. Parker's uh, got some, in, like, in the hair flip. We, we Parker's got some, uh, pissed. <laughs> he is mad. He is, he like, is mad. I want to see some great flag. Great flag racing. One more. We're going to see those finishes. Okay, I mean, I, I can't wait for the for the VODs and the clips of our of our final laps of some of these races that we've had racing that for that great. transfer spot. If we show it's those, incredible. it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like this is the greatest <laughs> racing that it's ever been ever. That's right. The problem is there was all this other bit that led to the <laughs> Right. That's, oh, uh, man. that's the beauty of editing, isn't it? You can make something uh, look better than it was. That's right. That is true. Very true. <laughs> well, hey, we got a lot to look forward to uh, moving to two-round qualifying. This, this race is not done drink. yet. This race is yeah. not done yet. I have a feeling Parker's about to go full steel horse Cadell and just start uh, shotgunning Trulies on cam. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, Indie Runner 72 in, in my Twitch chat here says I watched the pro sessions in, in practice and we'll see just as many yellows. Um, I don't know, though. 400 miles with no resets. You're eventually going to run out of cars. 10 cars, I don't think it'd be a lot of yellows. Yep, yep. I mean, Parker and I's goal is to have a green flag pit stop in this thing. I, What's the... Anything. Do you think it's going to happen? Should, we should put up... We should basically put up a green flag pit stop cycle winner. If it gets to a green, a green flag pit stop cycle, whoever's the leader after the entirety of the cycle under green flag wins a prize. What, what if we could get a sponsor to come on board and just raise the prize purse by like a couple thousand dollars if the field goes through a, a complete cycle of green flag pit stops without a yellow <laughs> everybody gets paid everybody, everybody gets a bonus <laughs> everybody gets a bonus <laughs> oh man well i think we could get you know maybe we get a big green egg that goes to or it's a blue emu care pack or a set of valve wings. i don't know i'm just throwing things out there for getting the whole green flag cycle through i would uh yep. I, but i believe in that you know race, what? we will see it i i think we'll get our partner over here far far over on the other side of the screen infra resolutions we'll put up some uh a code or something on their website you can buy some hardware uh whether there. it's a discount or something yeah it's, it's just on the other side of the screen there, there. We'll, we'll get a code on infra's website so you can buy some computer hardware at a discount if we get a uh, a full green flag cycle that's, we got one to go. Let, let's gift. Perfect gift. Let's get some storylines going here, Parker, because because we got a stacked field. 
We do. We got a stacked field here. We got Matt Busa, who's outside, the NASCAR driver for Williams F1 Esports. He's outside the uh, tr transfer spot right now in 17. So he's got some work to do. Um, so who are you taking? Who's your story? Your transfer spot story? We're, we don't. We're not I worried about this top Majors, five. I think TJ Majors is gonna, unless he finds himself getting some serious uh, movement here, he's gonna continually be on that transfer spot, climbing zone. his way up. So. Oh, you think yeah, he's gonna be on it? Up. You don't think he's yeah. gonna climb into it? Yep. I think he'll be on Interesting. it. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I'm on Team D Natters. He's he's my story. He's been committed. Uh, I want to see him make it. Yes, what about sir. you, David? I'm with you. I'm I'm with uh, I'm on Team D Natters as well. Uh, a fantastic member of uh, of my Twitch community. Uh, so generous and and fantastic. I know how much he's put into this thing, and uh, I would love to see him get in as well. So I'm keeping an eye on the 23 of uh, Dylan Nadwadney and. Uh, boys don't what get a hold of your spotter tj tell me close up that gap what's he doing well who yeah his spotter needs to be yelling at him oh man that's uh look at the gosh, has the gonna like the field. that that's no. that's where it starts it no, has that, that hole right. Right. on the rest Green of the field come out now he's fine but josh won't like what he saw there yeah because that accordion you can see the whole accordion yeah. is happening yeah. now yeah right. now he kills the whole field. in the back yep Big green A, green flag back in the air, and, and yeah, the field's just absolutely scattered. And that's the that's the effect that it has. It may not be in the car that's doing it, but way, way back in the field, it just gets worse and worse uh, as they stack it up. But it's still going to be William Byron Jr. leading this field, but don't look now. Ryan Doucette on the charge on the outside lane. It's going to push Will Norton. Look at that slam draft down the back straightaway. It's going to push Norton out to the lead. Doucette up to second now. And here comes another car on the outside. Spencer E. Burns moving up into that fourth spot. Well, it's a tandem down the back stretch. The, the high line's really coming to life there as they were coming off. Now it's losing a little bit of steam. William Byron's going to go to that high line, trying to use that to his advantage. He's still got the room down low, but he's going to get that push coming from Spencer E. Burns. I think you were calling him. Is that right? Uh, yeah. If he gets back to the back bumper, William Byron will see if he gets that push oh, down boy. into turn three. Look oh. at this transfer spot right now. They are nose to tail side by side. TJ Majors in the middle of it, Spencer Tart, and there's a the wrecking off of two, big wreck off of two. We see it right there oh, on the screen. Man. This is an ugly one. This is a this, real ugly one, boys. This is gonna send there's one still flipping the 15, it looks like, of Peyton Johnson. Oh my goodness. This starts with wow. Zach Kelleher, the 75, who again ramps up the outside wall along the banking and turns one and two slides all the way down the track and Gosh. gets hit by every damn car in the field. <laughs> Yikes. And Rudd. Oh, yeet. Flip right there. Did I if, do that he's in a, if he's yes, in a motion was... rig, he is flown out of it. <laughs> he is that is throwing up yeet. right now. <laughs> that was disgusting. <laughs> Say that again. Disgusting. Again. The 15 Rainier ride. That's a classic. Oh, my oh. gosh. Every time. That hurts. Maybe some Arca brakes there. I'm not sure if the caution oh. was out when that happened. Arca brakes. That's rough. Poor Arca. I don't even think Arca wants to claim that. But no. Uh, no. Well, let me tell you something That's about uh, uh, Ian Rudd, I think, gets the uh, is the recipient of the full Yeet Award for this race because my dude was still doing Ooh, 195 miles an yeet. hour. When he drove is, through Zach Kelleher. Yep, Philip's going to need a uh, reset after yeah, that well, one. And I don't think he the, just ever acknowledged there was other cars. On no. <laughs> he didn't move at all. No. And, oh, God. Someone just blew an engine. Hopefully and no he, relation to Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd fans out there shuddering, you, in fact. My, my chat pointed out that even the blue cone took a hit there. <laughs> oh the oh my gosh yeah the cone oh no get an f and chat for the cone need it f and chat <laughs> f and chat oh man well the 015 Ian Rudd uh we hope you're okay man yeah keep it up that's uh whoa that's tough that's tough whoa. right there well uh we'll bring you into the booth obviously you're looking at our uh, our shiny faces here uh, david Schildhouse, parker Kligerman, landon castle we've been guiding you along on this journey tonight much like we did last night 
And uh, if it's your first time joining us, welcome in. Hope you're enjoying the show and hope that you continue to come back over the next couple of weeks. I think I think we came to the consensus that we're calling it Fire Weeks. That was a recommendation of uh, yeah. someone from the community Fire as week. well. Okay. Yeah. Not I like Because we can't use okay. Speed Weeks without getting uh, sued. So we're going to go with Fire Weeks. A big thank you to the individual who uh, proposed that idea. I know there's a lot of you, but um, we're going to go with Fire Weeks. But uh, for those Love who are it. back for a second night, welcome back. And... Um, just remember, we got a lot more racing action coming your way next week. We've got qualifying, two-round qualifying to set the field for the Firecracker 200, and then ultimately the Firecracker 400, which will go off on July 1st. The Firecracker 200, of course, on June 29th. And uh, do we have a, a set time of when uh, when qualifying goes and when our broadcast goes next week, boys? Is it seven or eight next week? Eight. It looks like Parker's confirmed. I want to say I want to say eight to eight eastern next week for two round qualifying very classic structure single car qualifying top 20 advance after the first day remember we're qualifying 88 cars by the way uh so we're going to be able to focus a lot on the drivers a lot on their paint schemes um it's open setups so these drivers you're going to definitely have to tune in we're, we're going to talk to as many of them as we can talk to them about their setups their thought process you, know, you can adjust the spoiler in this car and uh, and really focus on on the driver star power we, we want to elevate these these drivers in in our events uh we want to share them on social media we want to give them content um that's why you've probably seen the tune-in graphics that we've been distributing uh, we want our drivers that make it through this field um to be big time drivers that we want this to be a big stage so uh two round qualifying will be a lot of fun locking in top 20 round one everybody will come back second day uh and then it gets tricky you can stand on your time if you're 21st through 43rd, or you can re-rack it and make another run and see if you can improve. If you stand on your time, that's what you're stuck with. If the track gets faster and 30 cars behind you bump you, uh, then you're out and you're not racing in the Firecracker 400. So uh, the following week, we'll have the 200 mile race and the Firecracker 400. We got a lot of cool stuff too coming uh, on the broadcast. Uh, we've got the NASCAR Hall of Fame has come in and helped us out. Uh, we're going to have a lot of good content uh, that will throw it back to 1987. I'm super excited to show you guys. If you guys like this broadcast at all, I don't know if you do. I do. I think it's great. Our team has done a wonderful job. Um, it's going to get even better. Hell, yeah. Looks great. Graphics are great. Uh, that was some of the most consistent feedback that I got were the, uh, the graphics, Parker. Everyone loves them. Cool. Eh? Uh, the whole team's knocked out of the park. Chris Handel, I mean, he's done an amazing job. Ryan Bauer and everyone, all our camera guys. This is uh, it's been a huge team effort and um, Mrs. It's been Castle. a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. Mrs. Castle as well. Yep. Uh, my lovely girlfriend, Shane Ward. Um, she's been great letting me sit in here this whole time. So let's get back green and uh, see some awesome racing. Yes, and thanks to nobody who I have to say thank you to for letting me do this. <laughs> you can thank Big Green well, Egg. You know, Father's Day is yeah. a good time of year to buy a Big Green Egg for your dad. So go check out uh, BigGreenEgg.com. Absolutely. Big Green Egg, Green Flag back in the air. We're looking at Liam Brotherton in the Transfer Spot Cam from Trans Service. Big thanks to Trans Service who's been sponsoring that Transfer Spot Cam the last two nights. Will Norton out in front leading Ryan Doucette. Byron there in third, and it's a gaggle behind him. Uh, with a lap car of Alex Grace leading that uh, second pack in front of Michael P. Frisch, Logan Clamp, and they're side by side with Spencer E. Burns and Josh Parker there along with Eric J. Smith. Haven't talked about Smith yet tonight. Sorry. Oh, Eric. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the transfer spot. Go ahead, Landon. No, Eric Smith driving our uh, our, uh, our our big green egg uh, ride. Yeah, he drives for uh, I think it's Jim Beaver Esports in the e That's right. series. So there he big is. Green egg sponsorship, and uh, that car. I love how you can classic. make a you can make a classic paint scheme out of anything, Parker. Yeah, especially green. Green is a great classic color. The gold wheels. I mean, that's yep. just an awesome looking race car right Seen there. Green number nine. Fits in perfectly. <laughs> Let me soak in the sounds there. Just, uh, man, it's fun to see that flyby cam uh, when they come flying by. They're wide open. Just uh, just committed to it. And then look at this transfer spot. It's still a hornet's nest. It's just, it's unbelievable. They're right on top of each other. We've got damaged cars. We've got clean cars. Brotherton looks like he's done 500 laps at Bristol with that back end uh, of his number 10 all beat in. As they're about three wide with Marinac there on the bottom. That's Hallis in the middle and Burns up top. They get it sorted out. A little bit of patience and restraint shown there. 
rewind a little bit. They sort of settled it down. There we go. We start to get too wide again. But man, that was at my uh, heart and my throat there for a second. I really thought we were going to see another wreck for that transfer spot. But they, they cleaned it up. And now they've gotten back to being basically two by two. As we look at the lead battle here, Logan Clampett trying to push William Byron. And we got that transfer battle up in the top right. Yeah, I mean, it makes me nervous just being right on that yellow line on the bottom because it's, the track is so rough off of turn four. So it's easy to clip the apron and it and it doesn't just spin you out. It shoves the whole car up the racetrack. And usually the guy on the outside of you is the one that pays the price. This is on board a little bit. I, I don't even want to say nothing. Let's just listen to Josh Parker work the throttle around the track here. Gives you a great sense for how much the car moves around uh, as we look back at Spencer E. Burns. Uh, the, just the amount of motion and movement that the drivers have to deal with. It's so hard to tell from the broadcast sometimes until you go on board and get that driver's eye view of how much the cars move around, the speed that they carry, and, and everything going on around them. It's, it gives you, hopefully, a little bit better understanding of why they struggle so much as we watch these hands of Spencer E. Burns doing work right now down the back straightaway. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you'll see how much wheel input he has to put into this thing as he follows Josh Parker around. Not you the see how they bounce around. Yeah, the car's just moving up, all, moving all over the place. You know, these this group of drivers, they look tight on each other, but they're doing a good job keeping it off the wall and turn four exit. Is that kind of a a 15 car breakaway here? It seems like they're catching a lapper here. Hopefully he's able to stay low, get out of the way for these drivers. Doesn't cause any issues. Oh, no, 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 no. That's oh. close. Oh no! Oh, oh my goodness, he's in the grass. Oh my gosh! That's oh, that's it. Goal. That's of it. Course. Look out! Oh, and we have a blowover. No, a blowover. It's the whole field. It's the whole field. The whole field's in this one down the back oh straightaway. Wrecking into three. That's the entire field wiped out in that one. Oh my goodness! That is a major oopsie doopsie whoopsie file it under things you hate to see. That's that so involved. Boy. Oh. We were uh is the lap car there of Peyton Johnson, he just wasn't able to hold the bottom. I mean the the leaders were coming, they looked like they were gonna get out of the way fine. He touched the apron on the bottom and it just caused all sorts of calamity. He tried to get out of the way, but it was just almost too yeah. late. The leaders caught him at the wrong time. I, I mean, he did a good job of holding the bottom. It's just not much you can, it's just the, they just caught him at the absolute wrong time, really. So this you is gonna be one of the wildest shakeups we've seen yet. In the yeah, with most of the field, with get most of the field getting damaged there, I imagine most of them are gonna come down and have to take the reset as well. That's going to put some new names towards the front, but I, Byron got Sanford. through, Eric Smith got through, uh, I think Liam that, Brotherton made it through, Christian Sanford had a great on board there. You saw an uh, amazing job. Amazing TJ job. Majors made it through. It. He's got some damage, though. TJ's I mean, in fourth you can, right now. You, you can throw a little blame at the lap car, but they bypassed the lap car, and then they continued to wreck each other as they scattered, and, and nobody the really lap. lifted to give each other lead. Yeah, they, they just the didn't give each other enough room. Was also he spooked the second place guy on the bottom. He he lost yeah. the nose a little bit, got up. That caused everyone to go around each other, and yeah, the, the chaos ensued from there. But I don't think we see that wreck without that lap car being there. And, and the lap car was fine until he touched the apron and it spooked the car that was in second yeah. place at the bottom. The car just jumped up a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> William Byron, if he was looking in his mirror, he had a he had a shot there, didn't he? There's there's uh yeah, I think there's a lot of blame to go around. Uh, on that one, Clampett almost made it through. You saw him get up on two wheels. Um, Michael P. Frisch was involved. I mean, most of the field was involved in that one. That's that's the biggest wreck that we've seen yet in these two nights of, of prelim races. And uh, just how much it can shake up the field now. I mean, Byron Smith, Sanford, Cronin, Wetbusa are up there in the top five. But a lot of the heavy hitters that we were 
watching are, are way back in the field now. They had to take a reset. They lost all that track position. And we've talked about it so many times, Parker. You lose that track position, you're almost at a, a 0% chance of getting into that top 11. This race will move to time, as we see there on the graphics. So it's going to be, you know, sub 12 minutes at this point. Um, and it's really, really hard because, you know, these leaders won't pit. There won't be pit strategy. So William Byron, most likely, barring the disaster, will not pit this entire race. Uh, no one really in the top 11 will pit. So it's uh, it's really going to come down to having to make up that time via passing cars and driving. I, I do want to make and a point here. Part. That one, one point, though, we, we've seen more green flag laps in this race than any of our other races. And I do think that some of these drivers that have had to pit, take a reset, and get four new tires, there was enough cars that wrecked that it'll be interesting to see who that first guy is. The first guy come off pit road, what position he's in with new tires. Because there is going to be an advantage there. Now, obviously, yeah. with the restarts, are always a crapshoot. We know that. I mean, there's a good chance we these guys don't go half a lap uh, three times in a row. The race is over, right? But if you see four or five laps of green flag racing, Parker, I think that someone like TJ Majors, who got through the wreck, came out of the, the smoke in third, but still had to pit for a reset, uh, his reset and four tires are going to look pretty good. You're, you bring up a great point. We did do you know more green flag running than we've seen as of late, so did TJ Majors have to pit? Is that what we're showing? Car looks brand new to me. Yeah, he's yeah. back in 30 yeah. seconds. So he had enough damage. I thought he did get enough damage. Oh, that's a shame. So he's going to be back. He's going to be back maybe in 30th. That's going to be tough. He's in 30th is too far back. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, yeah, I don't know. A lot of guys. Are... This field completely. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's we, definitely. We take a look up. at the big names we were following before that yellow. Will Norton, 33rd. TJ Majors, 34th. Spencer Burns, 31st. Ryan Doucette, 30th. Michael P. Frisch, 27th. Liam Brotherton, 26th. Logan Clampett, 24th. Uh, Dylan Nidwadney in 23rd. So, um, yeah, a huge, huge shakeup in the field. And now Steph Marinak finds, uh, finds himself in that transfer position. Josh Parker in 10th. So we get ready for this restart and, and again, trying to get these cars closed up as uh, as we get them back underway. But it's going to be William Byron leading us back to the green flag. You see the Barney cam there, big green egg, green flag back in the air transfer spot uh, cam provided by There's Trans the there. Oh, yeah, no. big accordion. Cars everywhere. Oh, they're wrecking. They're wrecking. They're, oh, my, oh, my goodness. That's TJ tore up in that Rutherton's one. Rutherton's in it. No He's caution. Road, still green. I, I, no caution for all that. I think we all wrecked on That's, pit road before oh, the we got, a wreck, we got two guys spinning here into one. Let's see if they can hold on to it. Is that Busa? No, That's uh, Tart. Spencer Tart. Spencer Tart yep. goes around uh, after contact. There were three wide. Steph Marinak in that transfer position throws it to the bottom of three wide under Tart and Dylan Smith. And there just wasn't room. There just wasn't room for that move. Smith holds on to it. Tart does not. So a lot going on there. The restart jumbling that uh, got a lot of people really messed up. And then that issue there in turns one and two, just, uh, I don't know. What do you see there? I, I see, we're going to be out of race cars. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they all got resets, but you know, you got to think the first couple re the first couple cautions in this race was the back of the field wrecking. They all took the resets. Now the front of the field wrecked, they took resets. And now the back of the field is back up front again. So, uh, I, are we out of, how many cars are we going to have left? Well, uh, we're, we're losing them at a rapid pace. I'll tell you that we are losing them at a rapid pace. I show oh. 32 cars on the lead lap right now. TJ majors being the last of them. And I believe TJ a out. lot of damage. Yeah. Man, oh man. Yeah. That's tough. Um, that's tough. We got uh, a check of social media again hashtag firecracker 400 it's been a great great involvement from uh from the community today on twitter with that hashtag uh justin Malilla with a fantastic shot uh looking at william byron and the huge wreck behind him what an absolutely beautiful beautiful shot there 
um, everybody checking in and, and let us know how much they're enjoying this uh, event. We got a lot of great onboards from people who've been involved in these races of them getting through wrecks and things like that. So again, if you want to stay involved, find us on Twitter, uh, give a follow to uh, eraser as well on Twitter and uh, stay connected for everything that's continuing to uh, evolve and build here over the next uh, two weeks with fire weeks. I like that. I think I think that's going to stick around. Yeah, fire weeks. I like. I think you did. Yeah, that's cool. I like that because it's hot. It's supposed to be really hot. I mean, if we were, uh, if you were able to feel the heat, of these cars, it would be incredibly hot. This racetrack is incredibly hot. So, I like fire weeks. Well, the the heat might be the tempers of some of these fire drivers weeks. as well coming out of here, Landon. Boys, my Apple Watch has just gone into reserve power mode at this point. I mean, oh, this, no. this has been a marathon of a prelim <laughs> night here today. We uh, we're run, we're 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 putting everything to the edge here as we come down the last few laps of the pre, first ever prelim nights of the Firecracker 400. A Class C driver. That is spots. Travis spots, running 13th. Well. Could this be our underdog story? I think it could be. Could be. I mean, I spots. That's a, I, I think, is that a 1500? I'm trying to find this 1561. Uh, 1561. I yeah. Well, I mean, with all those wrecks, I mean, it really mixed everything up. Um, I mean, Josh Parker found himself back into the top 10. Matt Buse is up there. Logan Clampett is back in 19th, Parker. Yeah, not going well. Need some green flag running here. I think we, we uh, I, my boy Dylan, Natawadney, uh, is probably going to be on the outside looking in here. So Travis Spots it is. Here's our underdog. We want to see him in. It's just like, All right. who, what was that, Aaron Roth, the rookie we had? near the transfer spot was that two races ago that's right yep. now we're now all about travis spots come on travis spot 69 greg biffle would love the number of your car nice get a nice and chat for travis spots nice. nice in the chat nice for travis chat. 69 uh, here you go here's here's your uh here's your dad humor travis spots is going to need two more spots to get into that 11th oh, position oh, oh, there you go oh my god i'll see myself out yeah <laughs> I Don't feel leave. gross after you. saying that one. <laughs> we need you. Okay, I'll stay around. I'll stay around. Uh, lights are out atop the pace car, which means we're getting ready for another restart. Let's take a look at the top 10 real quick. It's William Byron, Jr. out in front. Eric Smith, second. Christian Sanford, third. Gary Cronin went in fourth. Matt Busa in fifth. Dylan Thomas, Logan Hagerman, Josh Parker, Colton Harvey, and Steph Marinak in that top 10. Of course, Brent Poncari in the 11th position. My little buddy Dylan Smith there in 12th. I know Dolan, as we call him, is uh, really amped up for this race and uh, was really looking forward to it, trying to work with his buddy Michael P. Frisch out here. They're separated by about 10 cars, but Dylan, with a shot at this thing, just got to uh, survive here as we're getting down to the end of this. This might be, might be the final restart. Well, fingers crossed. We got a lot of drivers with a lot of work to do back in this pack. This is going to get frisky. All right, wrong Dylan Smith. My bad. There's too many of them out here. I can't keep track of all of them. Anyways, we're back under green. Thanks to Big Green Egg. Sorry, Dylan. You're still my little buddy, but not this one. Everyone single file fighting to get down to the bottom. We've seen that before. Two wide, Josh Parker and Logan Hagerman fighting over that seventh and eighth position. Parker on the inside. Oh, we got oh. back in the back in the turn one. A lot of junk cars in the air. Yep. Oh. I think that's going to do it, too. I think that's the think end of so. it. Half minutes. That's close. Well, here's the interesting part. We've seen a couple times where if they get close enough when they get that white flag, it does allow them one lap past the time limit. So we'll see what this brings us don't go anywhere oh yeah so this, go wait, this our best our best finishes have been the ones where it's a it's a white flag finish and no caution 
So I'm I'm gonna say that wreck was absolutely 100% avoidable. Ch uh, Colt Colt Cecil, I almost called him Chuck Cecil, the University of Arizona grade. Colt Cecil uh, absolutely does not leave a room for Jacob Barbie coming oh, through oh, with a head of gosh. steam. Completely chops him off, which sends Joe Adji cartwheeling and then uh, gets smacked a couple more times. Logan Clampett's involved. Adji up into the catch fence. Clampett, a lot of damage there. Just, uh, that's, 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 I don't know, bad block, poor awareness. I don't really know what it was. I mean, that, more the, awareness. The, the, there was a run from Jacob. Uh, there, there's some racing involved there. I mean, it's just, it's, you just can't block like that. Uh, but it's late in the race, you know, he needed to throw a block. He needed he needed to get a push uh, But it was just a little bit too late. That's all hmm. Yeah So we're but gonna we, find we out where we're at boy, Travis spots Travis spots was not involved in that, but he's still in that 13th spot He didn't get any spots. He's I'm gonna, gonna stop saying spots more. now. Can you one Eight. more time spots 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 spots? He needs two more spots <laughs> <laughs> He needs some spots guys but he needs two more of himself. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> he needs some spots. Yeah, he needs two <laughs> more of himself. Hey, it was a good shot of Logan Clampett's uh, beautiful Valvoline scheme. Have you heard of them? They're a great uh, oil company. Um, one of the best in the world. The best in the world. Oh, well, I was They're about to say companies. one of the best in the world, yeah. huh? The best. The best. There you go. There we yep. go. Actually, the world's first motor oil, just so you know. Yes. Over 100. Hashtag first. Old. Yep. Hashtag uh, Freddie Kraft no. chimes in on Twitter. Damn it, TJ Majors. Fire your crew chief. Should have stayed out. Door bumper clear car. Could have hung on for a lap. Hashtag time limit. Hashtag firecracker 400. Hey, what was he doing? If that engine didn't blow, should never have pitted. So. Uh, I better I, straighten up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Parker, you're, you're looking uh, for uh, Sorry, guys. You're <laughs> <laughs> David's making, looking us, like a... making us look bad being all perfect and everything. Look at like a oh. rough night out with the boys here. <laughs> We're getting late at night. It's uh oh yeah. The late where you are? It's only I mean it's only quarter to nine where I am, and the night's still young. Or, and so are you. Aren't you lucky? Sometimes. Sometimes. Lucky. Tough to make the start of these things though. Remember, three three hours is a long time. It is. But you know, we're we're waiting to see if this thing's over. If we're gonna get a one lap deal, I think. I think it's over. Personally, well, let's uh, let's let's talk to the leader of this thing. That's what I was thinking. We're just gonna talk to him while he's driving and pacing. I like it. I think so. Can you? But see, my my problem here is, can you scroll in Discord while you're dragging someone? That's here's, what I'm here's trying the quick, to tackle. Here's the quicker thing to do, Landon. Right click on them. And then you can. Um, oh, that's be an a good option way to of, do it. of where to bring them to. <clears throat> got him. Yeah. Well, uh, hey so we we've got him in here. Hey, yeah. William, you're you're you pretty much wire to wire here. Are we? We're not getting the green. Is it over? Uh, it says one to green, but it says white flags. So I guess. Okay. So I guess yeah, we're good. So he's gonna end up. What he'll end up doing is extending the caution, okay. uh, and take the checkered. So um, I got gotcha. you. If, but uh, great job. Uh, Thanks, nice run in dominating fashion as well. What, tell us about how you prepared for this thing, knowing kind of the format of fixed setups and then going yeah. to open setup and, and having to advance. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's um, these cars are really fun. I, I got to mess around with them um, the last uh, couple of days, and they're just really fun. That you gotta, you know, they're kind of like super lazy, but at the same time you're going super fast so just tried to kind of get the timing right of my entry and kind of how the car feels there and um luckily like there is some element of side draft with these things so it's pretty cool to race with them and um, yeah they're they're pretty awesome so uh definitely a big fan of them and iRacing's done a good job with the tracks and um this is a cool event you guys are putting on thank you william yeah so you we looking ahead speaking of the event now that you're definitely in if you put much thought into how it's going to be open setup qualifying and, and what you're going to do there and how much time you're going to have to spend on that setup. Yeah. So I'm horrible at setups. Uh, you know, actually Chad, Chad, my crew chief has gotten on iRacing lately and he, we've done a lot of stuff with setups and so maybe he'll help out a little bit, but, uh, probably Nick Onger, um, and, and John, you know, they'll probably help me out with setups in some way. So, 
I really don't know what to do with them. I guess you're going to have to have the car super low in the back to go fast, but I'm sure qualifying is going to be tough. I mean, all the pro guys are really fast on here, so we'll see how it goes. Well, you're crossing the start finish line right now, taking the checkered flag. Do you feel like practicing for uh, uh, the 200 mile race or, or the 400 mile race? Hopefully you qualify in for the 400. It, is it going to be hard to practice in this kind of traffic and figure out what your car is going to do in a big draft? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't I don't know how it works with whether it's impound or, or whatnot, but I think you're probably going to have to have a different version of a setup for qualifying to go fast and it's weird, you know, you don't really qualify right around the bottom here. You kind of let the car drift up. So um, it's going to be a balance between handling, I think, and trying to get speed for that one lap. But um, the race will just probably be a similar setup to this, um, just making sure it handles well uh, so you can make moves. So the outside lane works, worked really good for this race. And kind of, like I said, the side draft uh, was super effective. So it's cool. Awesome. Hey, just real quick, tell us about that Logitech uh, logo on the front. That's such a super cool scheme you had put together there, and I just love that throwback Logitech logo. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's neat, man. I I um, I grew up on Logitech wheels, uh, G25 and pedals, and um, it's cool. You know, they've come on board with our esports team, and um, this is their logo from the '80s. So <laughs> I guess it's '88 <laughs> when it started. So pretty neat. So I'm I'm happy about that. That's awesome. Well, congrats, man. Thank you again for being a part of this uh, event. We love having you and look forward to seeing you in qualifying. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, William. Yeah, thanks, man. Wow, what a winner. Yeah. Who would have thought that? You did You did call it. The, he's, you, you called him the best iRacer, didn't you? Uh, that was, those were my notes. Yes. So I, uh, I did call the best iRacer, but it was supposed to be the best iRacer of like the real racers, but we, okay. he confirmed it. He's a pretty good iRacer. So I think he would be in the E-NASCAR, uh, Coca-Cola iRacing series if he was just an iRacer and maybe had the time to commit to getting there. But guys, that's it. Prelims are done. David, Landon. Wow. That's like, uh, what do we do? basically eight hours eight and a half hours of heat races essentially over the last two, two days i mean we've had we've had some drama we've had some good racing we had a lot of caution phil i think we got pretty good at that but but we had some dramatic finishes uh uh we had some coke series drivers uh e-nascar coca-cola racing series drivers come through advance we've had some heartbreaks at the highest level, we've had some um, some other big names in the sport, like Dale Jr., William Byron. No NASCAR drivers advancing from day one. They all came from day two. Actually, how about this? Three NASCAR drivers. Wait, two swept these races today? Jared Smith, Lee, yeah, William Byron? Much. Yeah. Took up yeah, half the race. Much. Yeah, so Why we do you think that is? Last night, and then uh, we got them in this night. Let's take, let's let's take a look at uh, the results. We haven't, even, yeah. uh, we haven't talked about our transfer car there. No, we'll look at the results real quick. Um, William Byron Jr., we talked to him, gets the win. Eric Smith in second. Christian Sanford in third. Gary Cronin went fourth. Matt Busa in fifth. Dylan Thomas sixth. Josh Parker seventh. Logan Hagerman in eighth. Colton Harvey ninth. Steph Marinak in tenth. And Brett Punkari holds on for that 11th and final transfer position. It looks like we just brought Brett into the booth that's a lot of b sounds but brett you're in transferred 11th position congratulations <laughs> yeah i don't know what to say <laughs> i mean it was um i guess controversial circumstances what happened at the front of the pack but i mean I, I hate i hate to say it but i mean i'm not really surprised there was gonna be a lot of um wrecking just be it's just because of how these cars are and i just had a really i was so really apprehensive about this but it's a lot of relief to get this Princess Daisy car into the the second round. <laughs> uh, I bet. I bet. I mean, there's there's a lot of guys who can't say that they moved on. So for what you accomplished, uh, the, you you did something not a lot of people did uh, last night or tonight. So that's that's a job well done to you. Tough racing out there. We saw some a few squirts of racing, I guess you could say, but a lot of pacing. So when you're in that position and you're right in that transfer spot. You know you don't have a lot of time because green flags are, are very far, are few and far between. How do you handle that? What was your approach? I think the approach was to kind of like be among the front group. Like the very last restart, I had a 
decent enough of a jump to where I can be with the main pack. Um, but I had a feel at the same time, like guys were going to start going full throttle into the corners and I was not, I was not willing to go for full, full throttle into the corners because of the tires are going to be. And if, if push comes to shove, maybe I'll make a move. But the last thing I want to do is just try to block like a, like a dummy. Like the last thing I want to do is wreck guys. Like I'm trying to be like a Johnny Benson out here and not wreck guys, be like as respectful as I can in terms of racing. So, um, it's a tough, kind of tough, tough to approach that, but, um, like I said, it, it worked out, I guess. Man, that's good to hear a, a clean racer making it, making it through just like that. Got a lot of work ahead of you. We've been talking about open setups, getting through two rounds of qualifying, and then obviously the long race with no resets. So uh, hopefully you've got the time to invest and, and do it right. Get yourself in the show. Well, setup is going to be my biggest, biggest problem. <laughs> Anytime <laughs> I find the open setup races, I just download the setups from any setups from VRS because I, I can feel what a car might do, but I can't set up a car with beans. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you, I tell you, Brett, I mean, take a look at Brian Blackford on Twitch. He's he's raced his way in through the field. He's my NASCAR crew chief. He's going to be building his setups, and I think he's going to be pretty transparent about it on his stream. So, um, you know, he wants to share with the community what he's doing and the 88 of you drivers that have advanced uh you got you got a lot of work to do i think you you could put the same setup under everybody's car in single car qualifying uh and you still gotta drive them yeah that's the other thing too like i gotta figure out how to do um how to do the qualifying like decently because um one thing for sure i'm betting a lot of guys are gonna have like the quicker steering ratio i'm running like an 18 to 1 ratio because mm. of other tracks i've been on to save the right front tire and a little bit back to Tuesday, a race I did on Tuesday in a league, um, I was killing them on the long run because they were pitting so much earlier and I could probably could have gone maybe 30 or maybe 50 laps on a set of tires at, at Atlanta, by the way. But um, it was, um, that's gonna be my biggest problem, but I'm gonna give it all I got and that's all I can say really. Well, good luck that's to you, luck, man. Appreciate you being here and great job making it in, man. And we really appreciate you being part of the event. Thanks, and it's also a pleasure to even talk to you guys, Logan, Parker, and uh, Mr. Schildhouse. Um, it's probably going to stick, stick with me for quite a bit to talk to you guys. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's you, all man. right. Yeah. Thanks, dude. <laughs> there you go. A happy fellow there, Brunt. Uh, bet. Oh, gosh, now I'm getting his name wrong. Brett Pungari. <laughs> Um, <laughs> obviously, he was very excited. You could hear it uh, meant a lot to him to get uh, to get that transfer spot. And uh, we love to I think see that's that, really, man. That's that's yeah, what I think that's one of the about. coolest things. The, the, yeah, the, the, the sheer joy. Um, and you hear that in his voice. So that's that's really, really neat. So uh, congrats to him and the rest of the 43 drivers who who made it in tonight, fellas. Like we've done it. We've got through the uh, uh, the, the prelim races and, and we've whittled everybody down. And now we can focus on open setup qualifying to see the fastest of the fast to set the fields for the firecracker 200 and 400 yep david it's gonna be big it's gonna be a lot of work uh parker i will let you talk we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna find a good raid here if you guys follow us on social media uh, we'll be posting the official results the official 88 car lineup and over the course of the next week you're gonna see a trickle of content um highlighting these stars uh, that are going to be going through round two rounds of qualifying. Like I said, on the broadcast, you're going to see a lot of new elements you've never seen before in sim racing. We're going to highlight these drivers and their paint schemes. Uh, it's going to be fun, Parker. It's going to be awesome, man. I can't wait to see who you're going to find a raid, but I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to the qualifying show. I think we sort of showed some of the things we're going to bring into that, but we're going to get very interactive. We want you, the viewers, in the chat, so out all the different places you could be watching us to be involved in that broadcast and be along for the ride. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And then I just guarantee the Firecracker 200 and the 400 are going to be some awesome, awesome races for what I saw at the front of these fields. So I'm looking forward to that. Thank you to all 344 drivers that attempted here with this Firecracker 400. We've now whittled it down to 88, and we hope many of them will return for our next events in the future. But guys, this has been a blast. I've enjoyed working with both of you in this first uh, capacity and looking forward to next week in the qualifying races and getting in those big races the week after. There you go, Parker, mm -hmm. David, thank you, you both. I'm Landon Castle. And, uh, you know, as long as he, as long as he keeps a clean mouth, I, I wanna raid Chandler. 
I uh, eat racing right now. <laughs> let's get your hopes up on the clean mouth part. Let, let's just, uh, he just started a race. So, you know, tell him to behave and you guys <laughs> enjoy yourselves. Chandler's, he's got, he's, <laughs> looks like he's running uh, the Xfinity car or the Arca cars. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll let you guys watch him. Have fun. Tune in next week. Follow us. Eraser underscore GG on Twitter. Myself, Landon Castle, Parker Kligerman, David Shieldhouse way over there. We're all streaming. We'll all be racing. And the Firecracker 400 will continue. Thank you very much.